afternoon. What are you doing now? So, my name is Art Porter. I'm territory manager for Schluter Systems. Uh, prior to working for Schluter Systems, I was a flooring contractor in the greater Cleveland area. So, I grew up in a trade. Started off as a young kid, kind of kept me out of trouble growing up in Cleveland. After high school, it's kind of stuck with it. So, I've got about 33 years of my life invested in floor coverings. Uh, I'm going to Schluter for five and a half years now as a territory manager. I cover Ohio with the exception of Cincinnati, so everything else in the state I cover. So, Today, uh, David and I are going to run through a couple things up here. David is going to do primarily all the talking up here. I'm going to do the trawling today. Um, him and I might go back and forth on some of the conversations in here. Um, we'll talk about some new products. We have the new 2 meter Curdy, which you guys see standing up here, which is 6 foot 7 inches tall. So again, trying to find ways to make the installation faster and easier. Uh, we're going to do a barrier free application for a shower here with our new shower trays that are thinner. Um, it's a little bit easier to do barrier free and we'll talk over the demo as we go through a lot of things as well. So there's be a lot of information we'll share with you guys. Um, let David introduce himself and then uh, we'll get started. All right, good afternoon guys. Um, I'm David with Schluter. Uh, thank you guys for all coming today. Uh, we're excited to be here for you. Um, you know, just a little bit about myself. I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. Um, I've been uh, with Schluter for about four and a half years. Um, my background, I came from Tile Distribution. I worked there. I was actually art sales rep for many years and I uh, got art involved in Schluter. Well, it's not easy guys, I'll be honest. It's it's a, a, I was a hard to sell. Yeah, that was, that was, you're right on that. Uh, so we, uh, so basically uh, I was on the retail team when I left um, distribution, so I, I've been doing presentations for about four states uh, for the retail team and with my background, they wanted me to come back on this side and help out and with the dealers and the contractors and the installers. So Art and I are co-territory together, so uh, I do the same, I cover the same as Art does. We do all of Ohio bus except for Cincinnati. So I look forward to working with you. Mm -hmm. Well, did we get started? You guys have some literature there. Um, there's a lot of food over there, so please don't be shy. Help yourself. Enjoy whatever you need. We're going to probably talk for about an hour and a half, two hours. Uh, this is an open forum, so ideally we're here to teach you guys about our <coughs> products and answer any questions or concerns you may have about it. So if you guys have dabbled in some things with our products or you're using them, you've ran across a couple things, just throw your hand up and we'll be more than happy to stop and answer the questions for you. Um, if it's a question about the Browns winning the Super Bowl, the answer is no before we get there. So we'll just put it out there. All right, and then uh, probably around about 2.30, we'll take a small break. Everybody can go to the restroom, if you're going to smoke or whatever it may be. Um, then we'll start back up in here and do the demo. All right, thanks. Thanks. So in front of everybody here, we gave everybody a packet of literature. So it's all our current literature uh, for you guys to take with you guys when we're done. How many of you guys are in here from where we're sure? Okay, so we got a couple of you here. There's a few of you that are not We're familiar with it. Uh, go ahead. So one last thing, if everybody hasn't signed in yet, there's some sign-in sheets over here. So during a break, if you guys get a chance, you could please sign in, we appreciate it. Thank you. And also too, on the table back here, uh, Art and I have our business cards on so the back back here. Oh yeah. So feel free when you guys go to leave, grab those cards and that. Uh, also too, on the back of our business cards, there's a 1-800 number, which is on the back. So if you guys ever have to get a hold of the technical team, uh, you can always get a hold of Art and I, uh, but if you know with all the presentations we do, and demos, if they're busy, it'll go into our voicemail, we will call you guys back. But it might not be for a while, but if you do need to get a hold of technical, that 1-800 number's on the back of our business card. So that's it. So today I'm gonna kind of go over our literature and our literature packets. Uh, I'm gonna kind of just start off with just real quick, uh, with, with Schluter. Uh, Mr. Schluter, uh, his name is Werner Schluter. So he's a master uh, tile setter over in Germany. Uh, you have to become a, a master before you become a professional. I know that sounds kind of funny, but that's how it is over in the other side of the world. Um, so Mr. Schluter, uh, Art and I met him. Uh, we met him about a year, about a year, two months ago we met him. We had a big 50th anniversary party up in Plattsburgh, New York. Uh, he doesn't speak any English, everything's all German. So but it was just really nice to see him. Um, but Mr. Schluter is about 70 now. Uh, he, again, he's retired. Uh, but basically, he said that he's never going to retire. Uh, he owns uh, six tile crews, so he's going to be out there constantly working with the guys, showing them because he said he'll die with the uh, One of the big things is that Mr. Schluter is actually uh, a tile set. So he's trying to help you guys out as much as he can. Okay. Um, since he just retired, uh, his two sons, Mark and Peter, are running the company. Uh, we are a family owned global business that we are in 32 other countries. So that's how big Schluter is. So over in North America, like real quick up in Montreal, that's where we do all our videoing. Uh, a lot of the Dietra, the Curdy's all made up there. Uh, we just bought a huge studio. So for all our YouTube videos, tip, the tips and tricks videos, and so that's all recorded right there. Um, but in the United States, in uh, Plattsburgh, New York, is our main headquarters. That's at the very tip of New York before we go to Burlington, Vermont right there. 
up there. Uh, basically, that's where our curdy board plant's at. Uh, we also, how many are really familiar with that? We have all our thin sets. Our thin sets. Uh, which, I'll talk about our thin sets here in a little bit. But our new silos are built right across the street. Uh, we do uh, a lot of our profiles are also made up in Plattsburgh. Uh, we do a lot of trainings up there in customer service. Uh, one of the biggest things with Mr. Schluter is, is that you, know, you need to be able to understand our system before you do it. So that's why Schluter does what we do with all the trainings, like what we're going to do here and go over our literature and all that. Because once you understand it, you can make a lot of money. So there's just different ways how to do it. So um, basically in Plattsburgh, they're open Monday through Friday from 8 to 5. So if you guys have to get a hold of the technical team, you know, if it's like at 501 or 502, it's automatically going to roll over to Reno, Nevada. That's our western distribution center on the other side of the country. Uh, we've been there, our night. It's in the middle of the desert, no man's land. Uh, so basically, just a big warehouse. We do uh, a lot of trainings out there and customer service as well. So that's it, just a little bit of history there. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, inside your pamphlets, I kind of like to uh, talk about our Dietra product right here. How many are in here familiar with Dietra? Okay, so I'm going to talk to you guys, if you guys aren't. Here, if you guys open this pamphlet up for us, Dietra basically is going, you don't need to use backer board anymore. I mean, all we need to use is one layer of plywood or OSB border, three quarter inch thick, or I can put this over any brand new concrete or any old concrete, okay, which is pretty slick. So here, in a second, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to type a guy when I teach and when I present, we're going to pull these pieces out. I want you guys to actually look at this to be able to see what I'm talking about, all right? But with Dietra, Dietra offers four great functions. Okay, number one, it's uncoupling. Okay, we are the very first company that ever came out with uncoupling in 1987. All right, so it's made for the horizontal movement. Okay, your houses are always moving to the right and to the left. You can't feel it, but it's moving. So if we take our tile and put it, we've married it right to that substrate. Okay, so also I'm going to talk about how I can make it 100% waterproof. Do I have to? No, but I could do it. It's also vapor management that we're going to talk about. And the last is called load support. It distributes the weight load. So here, we have two pieces of Dietra. This is our brand new Dietra folder right here. So what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to pull out the thicker piece. And I'm going to explain the difference to you in a minute of what they are. <clears throat> if you guys take this piece out, all right, I want you guys to hold it sideways. You guys should be able to see right through it. Can you guys see it right through it? Okay, that's our open rib, so it allows it for the flex. Okay, with that open rib in there, basically with Dietra, what it's going to do is it's going to neutralize the stress between tile and your substrate. Okay, but with that open rib, that open rib is made up with 44% of free space for it to allow to flex. All right, does that make sense? Now, let's flip this piece over. Okay, this is our white fleece. So this white fleece right here has been heat welded to the back. It's not glued, it's heat welded. So when we travel the proper thin set over a proper substrate, again, plywood or OSB board or concrete, and when I put it down and I take a wood float and I work it, or if I grab a roller and I can put a 50 pound bag of, roll, uh, 50 pound bag of thin set on it, and roll across it, what I'm doing is I'm working this white fleece into that thin set. So this white fleece is gonna weld itself. This white fleece, folks, is designed so thin set will never ever go through it. All right, so that way the open rib is made for the expansion contraction for the horizontal movement. Now, if I take this piece and I flip it back over for waterproofing, if I would grab another piece of Dietra and butt up to this, and I use our product called Curdy Band. Curdy Band's four mil stick, it's our seam tape. All right, a lot of guys in here has done it, you get probably know what I'm talking about. If I tape over the center of this, I just made it 100% waterproof. All right, here, where do we see that at? Okay, grouts and thin sets are not waterproof. So upstairs bathrooms, we have boys. They're constantly throwing water outside the tub all the time. All right, also too, with all, you know, um, within all the new homes and stuff, that with the washer and dryer also being up on the second level. And that we were at, actually was on a job site where I saw it and I felt bad for the lady, she left. And she left the washing machine running, and the back of the hose came off. So all the water went through the ceiling, and all the ceilings were down. So if they would have ditched it down, if they were taped it, all the water would have stayed up on top. All right, so that's how you make it 100% waterproof. Again, you don't have to. Now, let's flip this piece back over. Look at this white fleece. 
you can see that there's a billion pinholes in the back of this, right? This is how it's vapor managed. Detrough can go over, again, any brand new concrete. How long do we have to wait for a brand new concrete before we get on it and do stuff on it? 28 days, right? Mm -hmm. So here, if Youngstown Town Travel poured poured this entire building, brand new concrete last night, I'm talking brand new. And if I come in here at two o'clock in the morning and I stand on it, it supports my weight, I can use unmodified thin set or I can also use our new product called all set with thin set. All right? Draw up with Dietra down with a set tile on top of it. They're open at 6, 7 o'clock in the morning for foot traffic. If you want to force it across this floor, never ever harm it. You can back the car and we're not going to harm it. Right? Because the vapors are continuously breathing and curing. The concrete's curing at all times. Because all that vapor's coming up through the pinholes and it's exiting right through the open rib because no Vincent ever went through it. So that's how it's vapor managed. Last, it's load support. So let's flip this over. Okay, this is, this is the face of D-Trunk. Here, we have a dovetail on here, all right? So here, when we use unmodified thin set, all right, I'm gonna, I'll explain that, I keep emphasizing that, I'm gonna explain that a little bit longer, but if I use, un, I need to use unmodified thin set or I can use our new product called all set. I'm gonna take the flat side of the trowel, which is the most important side of the trowel, and I'm gonna go forward, and I'm gonna go backwards real quick. And I'm gonna skin coat, and I'm gonna fill all these cutback cavities in. So now, folks, what just took place, all these columns just locked into place. So it's a mechanical fastening that was designed by the Germans for load support. All right? So now, Detra, which is your eighth inch, that's the other piece that's in here. The difference between these two is your joist spacing in your house. All right? So if we have 16 on centers or 19.2 on centers with one layer of plywood or OSB board, three quarter inch thick, that's what we're going to use Dietra. So 19.2 is the most common right there. That's why Dietra eighth inch. Dietra XL, Dietra, let me back up, came, uh, back, came out in 1987. In uh, uh, 2000, was it 2008, when it came out, this is when Dietra XL came out. This is for 24 inch on centers, or if we're going to build up a three quarter inch hardwood. Okay? Or if we're going to use stone applications with a second layer of plywood. So that's the difference between these two. Again, is your joist spacing. Now, Dietra comes in three different size rolls. We offer our 54 square foot roll, which is our smallest roll. We offer 150 square foot rolls. Our largest roll is 323 square feet of uh, flooring. Okay, that is equivalent to 22 cement board units. That weighs it's three by five by half inch that weighs 792 pounds worth of weight. Okay, that the contractors and installers are moving five times. From the shelf to the cart, the cart to the truck, the truck to the house and the house where you're going. So take that 792 pounds and times that by five. That's how much weight you guys are using in the back. Whereas Dietra weighs 39 pounds, you guys are moving that five times. All right, so that is the difference right there. All right, that's a lot of information thrown at you. Okay, so here, what we did, what Sooner did also, this is your packet. I want you guys, we're going to work out of this packet. Inside your packet, we have this here. I want you guys to pull this piece of literature off. <clears throat> this is our Dietra installation handbook. We're the only company that provides a Dietra installation handbook with every single piece of our product. Okay, so for example, if you guys would order, I'm going to say 500 rolls of Dietra, you're going to get 500 of these because there's one of these in every roll. It's not this, it's a paper one, but it's the exact same thing. So here, uh, if you guys open this up to the very first page right here, here's the four functions that I just explained to you. So this way you guys can kind of look back and refresh your memory on that. But what's nice about this is, if we turn to page four and five, Schluter has everything drawn up for you guys. So it's all right in here. So here I mentioned, you know, again, one layer of plywood or OSB board, three quarter inch. Here's our 16 on centers. Here's our 19.2 on centers. Here's our 24 inch on centers. What's as nice is down here, this little diagram right here, everything is drawn out. We even with arrows to show you when we put Dietra, what thin set we use to put it to wood and what thin set we use to put on top of it. So everything is right there. 
One of the big things I like to put, uh, really point out to you guys here where it says limitations up here. Everybody asks us, like, David, what's a small size tile that we can put on top of each? The smallest tile that Schluter recommends is a two by two. All right? And the reason why that is is because on our dovetail right here, up on top, the cutback cavity up here, for example, if we don't have a contractor installer does not skim coat and get these filled in all the way, and a one by one is about the exact size about right where that is. Here with a two by two, it's going to offset it just a little bit more. So here we always say like with a woman's stiletto heel, if, if they would be standing on that and if there's no support underneath there, that stiletto heel has almost 1200 PSI. So it's actually going to crack that tile. So that's why we recommend a two by two. Hmm. Okay? So going inside of our shower system, any size you want. But I mean, again, that's for Dietra and Dietra Heat, two by two. Make sense? So as we kind of go through this here, let's turn to page uh, six and seven. Okay? Again, every, every type of situation you guys can think of is in this book here, which is nice. But off on page seven here, we actually have going over vinyl. Okay, up here you can see. We do not recommend over going over cushion back, but you can put Dietra over top of vinyl. But here's the thing, we do not recommend it. If you can get the vinyl out, tear it out. You guys are the ones there looking at it, we're not. Okay, but if that vinyl's down, solid and good, you think it is, you gotta rough it up. So take a brick or some sandpaper utility and cut it up so that way it gets some grit to it. And then you're gonna use shank nails. You're gonna nail that every four inches. And then when we get done with that, then we're going to use a modified thin set or rapid set to bond Dietrich to vinyl. Make sense? And again, it's, everything is explained to you right there. We also have down on page seven, at the very bottom down here, we talk about doing structural plank. So calling out, you know, that you, that you need a second layer. So here you can see everything is in the diagram right there for you. As we continue on going to page eight and nine, we talk about going over concrete and gypsum. So again, I mentioned going over any old concrete or any brand new concrete. Gypsum is very moisture sensitive, as you guys all know. So, you know, make sure you really read up on it. What I really like about this installation handbook that we offer, up here at this top right here, this gives you guys great information, you know, about really thinking about going over that. So it just kind of starts playing in the mind there. So read up on that. As we go to page uh, 10, heat of floor systems. Okay, this is big right here. Okay, yes, Schluter here, we hit a grand slam using D tree. And I'll explain about that here in a minute. But there's a lot of other great systems out there, guys. There's uh, Warm Manures, there's Sun Touch, New Heat, uh, Tech Inflory. Those guys, are, those are all great systems, right? If you decide to use one of those systems, we want Dietra over the top of their products. Does that make sense? It's gonna take a little bit longer to heat, but that's how you're gonna get it for the warranty. And we're showing it right down there in the little diagram for you. So again, Looking at page 11, again, we're talking about wood substrates, more concrete substrates you guys can read up on. Uh, page 12 is talking about waterproofing. Okay, that's, I mentioned to you about using the curdy band, putting it right over the seams to make it 100% waterproof. Page 13 and 14, this is very big, exterior applications. How many guys are doing exterior? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one of the big things is, guys, uh, if you guys have any concerns about doing it over exterior, we really want you guys to read this. Because on page 14 right here, there's a checklist. All right? And we want you to go through and check off every single box. 99 times out of 100, by the time you get to the fourth checkbox, you're going to be like, forget it. I'm not doing it. Because there is so many, so many variables there that, I mean, really start playing into uh, consideration. So, you know, read up on it, you can check it all out. I'm not going to sit here and read all this word for word. I mean, you got to check all them off to keep with a Schluter warranty, right? Exactly. Right. Correct. Yep. So, on page 15, we talk about movement joints. This is pretty big here, okay? Um, you know, down here in the bowl, it actually talks about using them for exterior and interior, which you guys can read up on. But one of the biggest things when we do Dietra and stuff, we want to make sure we leave perimeter joints all the way around the room from 3 16 to a quarter inch for movement. Okay, so if you do get expansion contraction, it's not hard butted right up against the walls. All right, so um, as we go on, let's turn to page uh, 16. 
This is uh, up here at the corner. These are our different types of uh, movement joints here. What's really sharp is this product at the very top. It's called our EKE profile. And I actually, I, can, I have a piece I can actually show you guys later on if you guys are interested in this. But what this piece does, this piece here is used for uh, mostly shower applications uh, because of, for, uh, if you know, if you, what's one of the big concerns when you get uh, done with a homeowner after a while? Doing burns. Exactly. And that stuff because of expansion and contraction taking place. Because if we do a bathroom shower, we would actually have a wall. Like if this wall here is exterior, this wall is interior. If the sun of that house is heating up, we got that expansion and contraction. Now we actually got that hard grouted in. That's when you start seeing cracks. This EKE profile is a plastic piece. It comes in six different colors that look like grout. All right, so you're going to pick this out and you're going to do this before the installation. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this piece and you're just going to hold it into the corner of the wall and then you're going to take your trowel and you're going to trowel it to the left over the anchor leg and over to the right of the anchor leg. This EKE profile, there's no thin set behind it. So this way, in case we do get the expansion and contraction, it allows it to flex so you won't ever get the uh, cracks. So that's a really, really sharp piece. You guys can read up more about that. Uh, as you go through, we have our BWS piece, uh, also for uh, movement, especially doing inside kitchens, uh, especially if you've got a very big island uh, with a lot of weight and all that, you need to make sure you be putting those in every 12 to 16 feet. Uh, down here, uh, it's called our uh, BWA profile. This profile has one anchoring leg. So what's nice about this profile, where we see used a lot, is doing uh, backsplashes for customers. And that stuff. So this way here, the anchoring leg goes up, and then the actual part that looks like grout rests right on top of the counter. So this way here, it's, it's not locked in, which is really sharp. And again, it comes in six different colors. So that's basically from your white, your beige, your gray, to a black. So those are it. You're not getting anything like red, purple, nothing like that. My wife just asked me, why is our, why is our grout line along this granite cracking? It will do. Yep. So that BWA piece, yeah, yep, that's yeah. the answer right there. All right. Very bottom profile, this is our called our Reno T. This is a nice one, making that transition from three quarter inch hardwood to actual tile. All right, what's nice about this is this, this transition piece here does not get thin set. What you're gonna do is just gonna put a bead of 100% silicone on both sides of it and just drop it right in, okay? Profiles, guys, is one of the biggest things. That, that's what started Schluter. And Mr. Schluter, let me back up for a second here. When Mr. Schluter first started, he was actually on the job site. He was uh, working with a, with a lady, and uh, he, put, he was trying to figure out how to make that transition from carpet to tile. And because the tile kept always cracking. So finally, he went home and drew, took, drew up a first L channel. And he kind of showed it to his wife, and his wife thought he had some. So they patented it, and Schluter's just exploded. So basically, profiles are what Schluter is. Profiles take the replacement of Bono's. And Bono's, guys, is made to coordinate. It's never going to match. I will argue that all day long with you guys. I've been to all the plants. I've been to Medellin, Crossfield, Casa del Chicasa. It's made from all different runs. All right. Over the years, European side of the world, there is no more bull nose. It's all extinct. Everything is all profiles. Coming Can't wait till that here, happens here. Yep. Coming over here, I'm going to say in about a year and a half, maybe sooner, you'll probably start seeing the same thing. When uh, the company that I worked for, the big distributor, before I left the Cambridge Schluter, I was doing 48 by 48 inch porcelain tiles, and I was also doing two meter by uh, three meter, which were 40 inches wide by 120 inch long pieces of porcelain for the outside of Cleveland Clinic. So why do I want to put a little 12 inch, 12 inch piece of bonus? It's never going to match. All right. So again, these are just some of the basic dialects profiles for your movement joints. Um, coming on page 17 right here, here's a nice little diagram. Uh, this is great because all the way around, it's showing the orange. That is your perimeter joint right there, from 3 sixteenths to a quarter inch for movement. And then if you notice where the island's at and the doorways, that's when it's going to start showing you and talking about the BWS piece here. And again, I'm not going to bore you with it. You guys can read up on that. Just kind of pointing them out to you. So as we go through on page 18 in here, and that's especially when we're going to be doing stone applications, and we call for a second layer that needs to be put down. And in case if a lot of guys don't understand how that goes down, right here's a diagram that shows how to do it. Now this is not to scale, but this is basically gonna tell you how to do it right here. So it's just a nice little diagram to read up on. Going through page 19, here we're showing you guys how to put uh, 
Dieter down and how to waterproof it. Uh, page 20 talks about thin sets. And this I kind of want to touch base on real quick here. How many guys in here, I'm just going to basically simplify this. How many people understand the difference between modified and modified thin set? Okay, I'm just two in here. Okay. Modified thin set, guys, has latex into it. So we need to be able to have air to be able to dry it. Okay. Unmodified has no latex, no, no latex into it. So we know it's going to dry super quick. All right? So if we, we, all, we all paint it, right? So if we would ever take a paint can and leave the lid off, what happens to that paint? You get a skin on it. It skims over. Right. Okay? So if you pull that skin back, what do you got? Fresh paint. paint. It's fresh paint. Okay, so here that's doing the same thing with latex and modified thin sets. We gotta have air to get in here to dry it. So anytime that I'm putting Dietro to wood, to a plywood OSB board, I have to use a modified thin set that has latex into it to bind the white fleece to the wood. Is that single flex? Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Here, if I would use unmodified, the white fleece is never gonna stick. So with the white fleece, and with the latex, the latex is going to pull the moisture and latex into the wood. That's how it dries. All right. Now, going on top of Dietra, okay, we recommend unmodified thin set. So I'm not telling you it's wrong to use modified, but I'm standing in here in front of each one of you telling you we do not recommend it. Okay. And the reason why that is, okay, here, let's say if we did, for example, a kitchen floor, 150 square foot kitchen floor. All right. So some installations they do leave perimeter joints around for three sixteenths to a quarter inch for Some installations they don't. So let's say we get that installation that it gets hard butted up against the walls. So they hard butt up against the walls. So now they're using a modified latex over the top to set tile on top of Dietra. All of a sudden, Mrs. Smith says, "Hey, wait a minute here. You know, I went to Youngstown Tile Travel, and so they said, hey, you know, Dietra can be 100% waterproof. Our freezer has a tendency to leak all the time." Sure, Mr. Smith, no problem. We take the seams with our curvy band. So now I just made it 100% waterproof and vapor tight. All right, so now I'm going to continue using latex over the top of Dietra. All right, what's happening is the moisture is coming out of that latex, guys. It's laying on top of plastic. So now I take my porcelain tile with the absorption rate and I put on top of it, I just trap moisture between two impervious membranes. In other words, it might not set. It might 50, 90, 500 days. We have no idea. So this way, by using an unmodified, we know it's going to dry super quick, all right? A lot of times out there, you know, we have cheaper bags of unmodified, and we have a little bit more expensive unmodified. The difference between that, guys, the cheaper bags has all sand in it, less Portland. The more expensive bags of unmodified thin set is totally reversed. It has all Portland, less sand, better bond, easier and travel to work with, all right? Well, that's a lot of information, David. Come on, Chuck. Again, it's all written right in there for you. Now, I'm proud to stand to say here, you know, about with our thin sets. We stood back and we actually, our, we, our company really listened to the media out there to find out what, what can we do better. And the whole issue was, is that we were, everybody was getting confused between what I use unmodified versus modified. Guys, our engineers designed a thin set, which is called all set, that has latex into it that you can use with any system of shooter that we know it's going to dry 100% on top of Dietra and then for an entire shower system, which is pretty slight. Now, we're not going back on our work, so that's why we made our other product called SET. That's our other, that's our unmodified thin set. We also have a rapid set that you can grout within 12 hours. I mean, that's huge, all right? So one of the big things is that, yes, you'll get a 10-year manufacturer warranty with any of our systems, but if you use our shooter thin sets, with any of our Schluter products, and you register it, there's a lifetime warranty on that. That's huge. Okay, does that make sense? I threw a lot of information with thin set right there, right? Yeah. Okay, so again, modify the wood, and then going on, and if you're gonna go on top of concrete, we wanna use unmodified, all right? So as we keep continuing through in here, so that was on page 20 on thin set. Uh, if we go to page, 22, we talk about testing and certification you guys can test. One of the big things with Schluter is that we do a Robinson's test. You guys all know what that is? It's a special machine 
that what it, it, go, it goes around and around and around in circles. And all they do is they just keep adding weight, adding weight, and adding weight to see if they can break it. It's past it all. So that's all in there for you. Okay, as we start going here on uh, page 24, this is a great uh, section talking about natural stone to porcelain tile. So as you can see, that travertine is the weakest stone, and porcelain with the plus part of the clay, the baking strength of it, is, you know, top of the line there. So basically, you guys can read up on all about that. Uh, page 27, right here, this talks about the, thick, uh, about the two different sizes between Ditra and Ditra XL. 28 and 29, we're just kind of basically showing you guys real quick on the different types of uh, products that you can get with it as well, between the curvy band and the inside and outside corners that we're going to talk about in a little bit longer. In the very last page, there's your 10-year manufacturer warranty right inside that catalog. Okay. One, one question real sure. quick about the, the, the uh, thin set. Mm -hmm. um, like if you took this plastic material that this uh, uh, stuff is made out of and it's made it flat, this wouldn't stick to that. The only reason why it actually sticks is because it has those dovetail portions yeah. in those openings that makes... Right. It's, it's right. It's the dovetail. So what you're doing is by skin coating and filling yeah. that in, you're locking all those columns in mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. Is what you're doing. And ideally, you want to fill all them cavities, right? Absolutely, you do. You yeah. want to skim coat it, correct? Yeah. Because if you don't, and that, there's free space in there. So by doing that, it's going to lock it off. That way, your tiles don't crack, your belt joints don't crack. So I had a little, 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 little scrap piece of that stuff, and I threw some mortar on it, and I could peel it right off. I'm thinking, how's this sticking to that? Put this whole floor down on here, but it's not relying on this. The mortar sticking to that. No, it's, it's locking into it's the dovetail. It's locking in the del dovetail, and that's what's yep. holding everything in place. Right, correct. That's why it sticks. Yep. So if they were square, they would just pop right out. Right. Like those little squares, yep. if they were okay. dovetail like that. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing, guys. If we actually come out to a job site for you, and if it's done right, okay, I'm going to take this plastic, I'm going to pull the plastic right apart. The white fleece is going to be welded right to the actual substrate. When I have the actual uh, good coverage and stuff, and we pop off the tile, we flip the tile over, the actual indentations from the thin set will be stuck on the back of the tile. Because it's actually locking into the dovetail, is what's going on with that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So here, guys, this DJ right here, this DJ right inch, this is a, what's a majority of all your car dealerships throughout the world. This way, when you drive the, crawl, the cars across the showroom, they're not cracking tiles from gout joints. Which is big right there. Okay, and then you'll the way I always finish Detra, and I, I love to I love to tell this real quick because this this is so true. Uh, it's been seven years ago now. And Mr. Schluter wanted to know what contractor had the best story in this entire country with any of his products. All right, whoever that contractor was who won it, he flew him to Germany to meet with him one on one. That contractor who won that is a very good friend of mine, our quarters, that Catman. All right, Cat lives up in Sheffield Lake. They did a house in Bay Village. It was a 3,000 square foot home for a lady, all right? So over one layer of plywood, she had three quarter, uh, one, uh, yeah, one layer of plywood, she had 16 on centers, all 24 by 24 inch tiles. And he back buttered every tile, too. So here, they got that entire house done. She looked at Kat and said she wanted her house moved eight miles down the road on another lot to get a better view of Lake Erie when the sun goes down. Kat's like, you gotta be kidding me. Cat's probably one of the most analyst contractors I've ever seen. He does all the work for ball players and the interior designers as well. He's like, why would you not tell us this before we started this? He didn't care. It was her money. He's like, whatever, no problem. So they literally jacked that house up off the foundation, put it on two semis, moved it eight miles down the road, poured a brand new foundation, put the house exactly how she wanted it. And when he walked in that house, he was pulling his hair out, which Cat doesn't have much hair to pull. When he walked in there, not one tower got joint cracked that entire house. So if we can do that, if you got the proper coverage, I mean, Dietrich's a great product to use. So, any other questions on Dietrich? Can, I've heard before, and, and I'm not positive, but can you span cracks in concrete with it? Can you expand? No, I mean, you just, no, you just go over it. Oh, well, span yeah. it, yeah, you just you go right over it. Just go right over it, yep. So, just, like I said, any old concrete, just fill it right over your thin set and put it, put it right down. That's all it's to it. Hmm. Okay. Any other questions? The uh, the EKE and the uh, PWA. 
Could that be used the same thing in the inside corner of the shower? Yeah, you might hurt. Absolutely. You, you might hurt. Yeah, I mean, you have to do it. If you're I mean, the inside. PWA, they put that up against the tile. Well, the PWA, again, you got to remember, that's only got one anchoring leg uh -huh. on it. The, B, uh, the EKE's got two anchoring legs okay. on it. So the BWA is more for doing like the countertops and stuff. Okay. But I mean, you could use it absolutely if you're doing it on the outside of the curb or whatever you need yeah. to do. Sure. And that stuff, that's no difference. Okay. It's just a two anchoring legs. Are they all plastic? Yes. Total plastic? Mm -hmm. All plastic. Mm -hmm. I got a piece in my truck I could bring it in for you guys and show you at the end. What is it? You put the towel up tight to that, then when you go inside yep. the corner, you yep. towel into it and make it tight. Right. Exactly. So all I'm going to do is just take the whole push piece right there, hold my finger. I'm just going to try to thin set this way, thin set this way, right. back one of my tile, and it's got an actual thicker lip on it. So this way that the thicker part goes on the back, so the tile goes in behind, so it slides in behind, and then the other tile just butts up to it. Uh, so, you know, when you, if you do grout, it's going to be so minimal that you're not even going to be able to see that. Yeah, right, right. So let's do it. Okay. So there's no questions on that. I like to. Yep, go ahead. Those the uh, angle in the display. This one here, which which one? Like you have the 45 in the bottom of the shower. Base. This here? Yeah. This here, that that's a that's a totally different profile. That's our AHK profile. It's our cove piece. It gives you like cove molding type of look into it. But it does the same thing. Blocks yeah. The tile in there. Yeah. This piece here is not going to be mostly used inside your shower, and that stuff you're not going to want to put that in there. You're going to want to use stickler with the EKE profile, is what you're going to want to do. I mean, I've never seen one put a comb inside. Kind of like to look at. Yeah, but this here is technically doing on the outside, like inside of a kitchen, is what they're basically. Because Dietra does not go inside of a shower. So Dietra's on the outside, so basically they're just kind of showing you how to do that inside the kitchen floor. Does that make sense? Any other questions on Dietra? Okay, I'd like to go on to Dietra Heat, talk about Dietra Heat. How many guys are familiar with Dietra Heat? Not too much? Okay, one. How long has it been out now? Uh, good, was it 2013, I want to say? I think it is. Yeah, I think it's 2013 or 2014. Dietra Heat here, guys, uh, is Dietra. We're giving you all the same functions, but now we're giving you one extra step. We're giving you a cable. Okay? Again, you know, there's a lot of great other systems out there. But when you use it, number one, you marry your right to the side floor. So again, that house is moving, so the heat's going to move with it. Also, too, whenever you use any other type of system, and you got wires like this, you have to bury those in self level to meet code. You have to. So now you just added another expense to the homeowner, and plus it just kills you guys a day in the field and make them money. Yeah, that's the right? Yeah. yeah. So here with Dietra, like I mentioned, it's on top of waterproofing, vapor, load support. Here's your extra step right here at the cable. Mr. Schluter designed it. This here, folks, this is the underlaying right here. So this is what we're going to put over one layer of plywood or OSB board. Okay, or we can put it over concrete. So here, we actually have two dovetails. Versus in Dietra, we have one dovetail that I mentioned. Okay, on top here, this is where tile locks in this place. All right, here the other second one is where the cable actually steps, snaps into. So when Mr. Schluter designed it, this cable is going to drop exactly a 16th inch below the stud. So this way I can do everything in one day. I can go in, I can put my Dietra heat mat down, figure out my cable, snap my cable in, and start setting tile before I go to launch. So when it goes in, you can actually hear it locking into the actual dovetail, just like that. All right? So now I can run my trowel, the proper size trowel, to the proper size of tile I'm setting right over the top of it, and I'm not going to touch the cable. All right? Here, if you notice right here, this cable, when this cable heats, this cable's at 104 degrees. It's a lot of heat. Okay? So technically, we recommend going every three studs. In a little bit, Art's going to talk more about this because Art is our top guy uh, with, with Dietra Heat. So here, by going every three studs, it distributes the heat equally across the floor, okay? So, if I start going every four, if I go every six, if I go every eight, okay, I'm gonna get cold zones in the floor. It's radiant heat, so wherever I have cables, where I have heat, right? It's not gonna jump. So, the whole trick of doing Dietra heat is we measure the area that you wanna heat. This is not wall-to-wall -wall dimensions. You cannot cut this cable. You can cut it, but if you cut it, you just kill the resistance in the cable, all right? Art and I know how to fix them. We're not fixing them anymore. We'll come out and, you know, troubleshoot it, 
but you're gonna have to uh, do it yourself or get a, uh, pay a certified electrician to come in and actually wire it all back together for you. So the way how I always explain to everybody, it, it's not rocket science. You know, grab a roll of tape and a tape measure. Measure uh, eight inches away from any heat source. So where's my register pen? Right there, put a piece of tape. Six inches away from any plumbing. I tell everybody, pretend if you're sitting on the toilet, where's your feet? In the plumbing, right? Put a piece of tape. With Art and I, uh, we have $3,000 heat guns that we can see right through the floor. I can tell you exactly where you space that cable and exactly how far it's apart. So we've actually found cable on the sides of the toilet. We found it behind the toilet. We found it up the back walls. We've even found it around the wax ring and we haven't even hooked it to the stack. All right? You're not walking up against the walls. Measure four or five inches away from the walls. Put a piece of tape. Where am I going to get ready at? Right here. My, uh, where's my vanity? Right here. Put a piece of tape. So you're going to measure that area. So let's say it's 50 square feet. I'm going to come back to that in a second. Now, if you guys go inside your book here, it should, it, it should be the last, it's the Dietrich Heat Installation Handbook. Okay. We're going to go over this big time here. Am I doing all right for everybody? So here, guys, right on the front page, and that is showing you what the cable should look like right here. Okay. So as we go through it, I'm not going to go over all this stuff again. But again, here's the four functions of what feature is. As you kind of go through this, we're showing you all the substrates again, how to do it all. But I want you guys to turn to page 10 for me. Uh, not 10. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, oh just page 10. I'm sorry. This here is a great picture of showing a shower that Dietrich Heat can be used in. So you can put Dietrich Heat inside of a shower, all right, absolutely. You just got to put our curtain membrane over it to make it 100% waterproof and vapor tight, all right. But the trick of it is, is getting the cable out of the shower. So if we had our own polystyrene curtain, normally you have to run it up on a 45 and come across and back down on a 45 and out on the floor. You just can't drill a hole through the curb, take the cable, and shove it through. It's against code. All right? So here, these are our new curvy board curbs right here. And this is awesome. This is, how many guys in here have used our shower curbs before the polystyrene ones? you got to wrap them with curvy, right? Here, schmooters come out with curvy board ones. It's a 38 inch and a 48 inch. So those are your two ones. It's wrapped with 5 8 inch curvy board, and you've got two inch supports in there for support. So that way you can rip it, cut it down, whatever. But here, what's nice is, is to get the cable out, all you need is a 7 16 or a 3 8 inch router and just router that right up and over the top. So this way here, you put your cable on, stick it over the top of that and out under the floor and then just put a piece of band over it, all right? One of the big things is, I'm not a big fan of putting electricity inside the shop. A couple reasons, all right? When I worked at the other tile distributor where I came from, I had to work our showroom once a month. I had a husband and wife came in. All right, and the wife starts talking. It wasn't, it wasn't the teacher feed system. This has been a while ago, but she's like, David. She said we did a ten thousand dollar bathroom in our side, in our house. She says, and we put heat inside the shower. She said every time I get in my shower, she says I'm getting zapped every six seconds. Wow, six seconds. She's like, yeah. She says my husband gets in there, doesn't feel nothing. She said after two weeks, I swallowed ten grand and had it all torn out and that stuff. And it turns out to be everybody has a different tolerance of electricity. You might have a higher tolerance than me, so you don't know. You might feel it quicker. You have no idea with that. So that's one thing. Most people take hot showers, turn the shower and let it, let it run. All right? The other issue could be, okay, normally where we see issues when we do Dietrich heat, and that is cleaning out grout joints. Okay? So let's say, for example, if you and I go tile, you know, I set all the stuff for you to tile, and I'm a terrible tile setter. I got thin set all over the joints. And you come in there to grout, and you're cleaning out all the grout joints with a knife, you have to nick that cable. If you nick it, and if there's a cut inside the shower, then that gets against code. We can't fix it inside uh, in the shower. So here, if you're going to do it, make sure that you actually put it on a separate thermostat. So this way here, you can just shut it right down in that, so that way it's just eliminating the issues down the road. I just kind of wanted to point that out to you guys, that's all. Okay, but it can be done. So page 10 is basically explaining you how to do it. I would recommend never telling a customer that you can put in the, in the, in, 
heat in the shower. I don't want to do that. But there's a lot of people out there that do want it. Really? You tear that page out. Get the page out of there. You'd be amazed. You need a heater on your ceiling. If you guys can do me a favor and turn to page 18, okay? I'm throwing a lot of information in with Dietra and Dietra Heat. Okay, with Dietra Heat here, everything that you need to know about Dietra Heat is on page 18 through 22. Okay, so everything that I'm talking about, I talked about the, the spacing, and eight inches away from any heat source, six inches away from the plumbing, everything is right here on page 18. All right, on page 19, this is pretty big, this is on testing the wires. How many guys in here have actually put Dietra Heat in? Okay, not nobody. All right, so let's kind of talk about this here. Cables, you guys need to test the cables. Okay, all the cables at Schluter are already tested, so we know they all work. Once they go out the door, we have no idea where the cables have been. All right, so we need for you guys to do some testing before, middle, and after. All right, so by doing the testing, there's four tests that need to be done. So we can do an ohms meter, and we also, technically, you need to be using a mega meter, a multi mega. All right, so here, <clears throat> up at the top here, this talks about the warranty right here. We have a 15 year warranty and a 10 year warranty. To get the actual 10 year warranty, okay, you have to complete at least three of the tests. Now, three of those tests can be used by an ohms meter, so you don't have to get a megger. A megger is an expensive tool, and what the megger is going to do, the megger is going to shoot, be able to shoot a thousand volts of electricity in there, and it's going to be checking to see if, it, if there's leakage of the cable, if it ever got nicked. All right? So here, by using the ohms meter, you can do test one, which is you're going to just test the resistance. You're also going to test the braid continuity, and then we're going to give you two probe sensors that I'll explain to you in a minute about. So those are your three tests right there. If you do those and record them before, middle, and after, you have the 10-year manufacturer warranty probe. All right. The fourth test, the, the for, to get the 15-year warranty, you have to do test three. That's testing the actual installation. All right. So here, how many, how many guys have actually put any other type of heating floor system in? Okay. You guys use a loud mouse? No. It's called a loud mouse. It's a tester to make sure you know what it sounds like when, when you cut cable. Yeah, the one comes with it. Huh? Well, the one I used to have the tester came with it. Okay. And that, there's a lot of them out there that's called a loud mouth. And when you put a loud mouth on it, if you cut the cable, the thing's going to sound. All right? So here, and that, what the is going to do, and that is if I would nick that cable, just nick it, and if I would have a loud mouth on it, it's never going to sound, all right, because I didn't cut it all the way through. But when I go to put my magnet on there and I turn it to 1,000 volts, I should get 2,200 just like that. But if it's sitting there slow, slowly climbing, 400, 800, 1,100, and then finally getting there, I know I hit that cable somewhere. So the, re the actual resistance, it's leaking, but it didn't cut all the way through. But the more a homeowner turns it on and turns it off, what's going to happen is going to cause those wires to actually fray right apart where it'll actually cause a break. So that's why that megger is so important to use. All right? Now, meggers can get anywhere from 300 to two grand. There's no reason to spend $2,000 for a megger. All right? And that the ones that Art and I use, ours is called a Fluke, which is 600, uh, 615 bucks. That's still crazy. All right? Schluter has this exact same one. Right here, guys, it's in this catalog that we sell for you guys. We do not mark them up. All right, we want to make sure you guys are having the right tool to do it. So the cost is 266 plus tax, takes it to 299, and then Schluter pays all the shipping charges on it for you. So it's like doing tile, you got a business, you need a wet saw, right? It's a business write off. So if you guys start doing this, and that get one of those measures through Schluter. And the other nice thing is that Art Nine, we can actually we have a PDF that we can send right to you that actually has it step by step of how to work the wires and show you what numbers you should be seeing. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so that talks about the warranty right there. Now, let's turn to page twenty. This is pretty big right here. Okay, so there's a bunch of things in here. Number one, actually, what's our, oh, this is perfect right here. I didn't realize he brought this with us. This right here, this is what it looks like, guys, going in. So here is our cable right here. Inside the catalog, you're seeing a little black puck up there. This is a little black puck right here. 
Okay, so they're all our hot and cold wires are coming together. So this here acts like a circle, all right? So we cannot cut anything from the gray at all, okay? So here, this is the cold lead part, which you get seven foot of this. So this here goes up into the wall to the thermostat. Here, we do not recommend you cutting it, splicing it, whatever, because in a minute, I'm going to talk about the little silver sticker as well up there, right? And normal guys just shove it all down into the wall. This little cold puck right here, guys, this actually comes out at the bottom of the wall. You are going to set it on top of the, the Dietrich heat mat, just like this, all right? So here, we're going to take a marker, and we're going to trace it. Once we trace it, we're going to pull it out of the way, and we're going to notch the Dietrich heat mat out, just like what you see right here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take either hot glue, two dabs of hot glue, or our thin set, put on the back of this puck, and this puck's going to go right back down into the floor. Okay, it sits about less than a 30 second higher than the stud. It's no big deal. All right? So here, once this goes down into the floor, then we are going to put our unmodified thin set or our all set over the top of it. Back butter our tile and set it. The thin set acts as a coolant that's going to cool this puck down to make it work more efficient. What happens is, 99 times out of 100, the floor stops heating, there's a couple things. But one of the things could be is that this cold lead puck could be up inside the wall cavity. And that within a year, it'll burn right out. If that's the case, then you're going to be redoing the floor. So this has to come out at the bottom and go in just like it shows into that floor right there. Does that make sense? Okay. Here, also you see in your book, your little jog. All right, and you can see it for you guys back there, it's part hard, but this little jog right here, I can go this way or I can go this way. Every 10 feet, we recommend for you guys putting that little jog in like that. And the reason why that is, let's say if uh, Art and I are doing it, or change the direction. Which or change the cable direction. Yeah, you can do cable direction either way. Here, if Art and I are taking a rubber band and Art goes that way and I go this way, what are we doing to that rubber band? We're putting stress on it, tension on it. Okay, that's exactly what's going on with the cable with resistance. So by just breaking it, or like Art said, running it a different direction, that you just broke the resistance. So it's going to make it work more efficient. Okay? This Good. part down here, this is your actual tail splice right at the end right here. So this here, guys, you cannot modify that. So if we're doing this side of the warehouse and that side of the warehouse, we can't just cut that off, cut the other one off, and try to wire it together. All right? It's not going to happen. You'll kill the resistance of both lines. So here, it's kind of hard to see back there, but here, what you'll do is just take your knife, just kind of lay it down, take a little marker and trace it if need be, pull it out, just take your knife, just kind of notch these pucks just a little bit and just then set it right down. Sometimes it just snaps right in. So that's it right there. Okay? Would you like to elaborate any more on that? For waterproofing, you just uh curdy membrane right over the top. Band? Yep, we haven't even gotten that far, but yet you put our curdy membrane right over. Sorry. Yep, absolutely good question. Here, down here in this picture right here, we give you two probe sensors. Should have just hold on to this. <laughs> this right here, okay guys, we give you two probe sensors for a reason. We want them both on the floor. All right, 99 times out of 100 when the floor stops heating, one of the probe sensors could have gone back. Okay, these probe sensors are going to tell the thermostat to turn on and turn off. Okay, so here we put two out, 24 inches out onto the floor. As you can see how Art ran it, you could run it this way, or you can run it every two, it doesn't matter. But what we're going to do is we're not going to take this across this here. We want to make sure it's in between the wires. So once they go out 24 inches, we're going to run them up to the wall. Okay, we're only going to hook up one probe wire. It's a little blue and red little wire. It just clicks into the bottom of the thermostat. The other one is a backup, so it's ready to go in case if something happens to the other one. So your backup one is just going to be tucked into the actual thermostat. So let's say five years comes down the road and the floor stops heating, and Mrs. Smith calls you. Sure, Mrs. Smith, charge you 100 bucks. come on, take a look at it. So they drive out there, take the thermostat off, disconnect the little blue and red wire, grab the next one, and click it in. should be up and running about 10, 15 minutes. First thing we're going to do is make sure you test the cables, make sure nothing happened within the installation. So, but again, the odds of a temperature sensor are going bad or slim and none. But we give you two just in case. Again, maybe 15, 20 years from now it stops working. Um, time and time again, we've proven that if something does go bad, typically it's a sensor. So it's a quick fix just by having one of the back up in the box already. And then that's on that page where we showed the testing. That's the last step, testing little probe sensors, what I was talking about. So by doing that, that's all it's to it, pretty much. Okay, any questions on the probe sensors? I did a, a, a different manufactured heat in my kitchen, and I went over it with the mortar to 
and make it flat, and then I put it over top of uh, uh, the LVT, uh, luxury tile vinyl, just a vinyl tile. And uh, can, you, can you do that with that? Just make it flat instead of putting tile over it? And no, then, they, all our products are designed for tile. For design for the tile. tile, stone, yeah. ceramic, and porcelain, that's it. So no, no vinyl, right. no, we do not recommend that. If you nick that wire in the installation, which one? The, this wire? Yeah, the, okay, the coil. Mm -hmm. Let's say you did nick that. Mm -hmm. um, is it shot or is it repairable? No, it, it, no, it's repairable. And then you can, we can do up to three breaks. We can cover up that. Your warranty will be up to three breaks. After that, then there's no warranty. Okay, okay. And you barely nick this housing. That's what Go you're ahead. talking about shopping, right? So, yep. So I'll elaborate on that. So if you guys nick the cable during installation and you know right away you nicked it, just give us a call. We'll direct you where you buy a repair kit and have an electrician make the repair. Up to three breaks is what's allowed. Anything cut more than three times is pretty much, it's unpredictable what's going to happen. Once the cable is cut during installation or maybe during a grout clean out or whatnot, at that point in time, the warranty on the cable is null and void. So there'll be no more, no more warranty on the cable. If something happened in the splice connection or the tail splice from a manufacturing standpoint on our end of it, we'll come out, we'll diagnose it, we'll make the repair while we're on site and the cable warranty is still intact. So that's not gonna go anywhere. Um, that's our liability, not yours, so that's not your fault. But if the cable does get nicked, at that point the warranty is void. Um, so in the case that you guys nick a cable, we come out, we'll help you troubleshoot it. Um, before we come out, we'll run you through our, our customer service, they'll answer, ask you guys some questions, you guys give some feedback on those questions, doing some tests on site. If they can't solve it over the phone, then they're gonna send me out there to come out with the equipment and diagnose exactly where to cut cable's at. You're going to remove the tile once I find out where it is. Once that's said and done, I'll test the cables from that point on and make sure there's no further cuts. If there's not, then you guys will go ahead and order a repair kit from your distributor and have your electrician make the repair at that point in time and put the tile back in place. You can fix so, the cable. You can find the cut in the cable after it's all tiled. Yep, mm -hmm. I can find exactly where it's at. How do you do that? It looks like the teacher has We have uh, specialized equipment that will actually <laughs> create what's called a carbon trace. There's a tool called a high pot and there's another tool called a variac. So as those run through, it would actually create a carbon trace and we'll take an infrared camera um, once we've got to heat it up with a variac and we'll be able to find exactly where the hot spot's at. So the cable won't heat beyond that point. Yeah, right. So we'll know that's where the cut's at. So it's heating up to that point. And then we'll get it to heat up to that point, correct. So you're sensing the heat to that point and then you're sensing the cold after that. Correct. It would be like a little cherry point just yeah. boiling right there at one spot. Is it basically like a heat shrink repair? Pretty much it is. So there's a solder sleeve that goes onto the two conductors. Uh, once that's done, everything's good to go. You wrap the ground braid back around it, and then you slide the new shrink tube over top so it re encases it back into a waterproof sleeve. In fact, if you're mudding this thing in as you're going with the square edge trowel, is that how you nick it? Would it be better to use a swimming pool trowel, something that's around it on the edge? To answer it, honestly, it's when guys are cleaning out route drums with utility knives. That's when it gets That's when it happens. happens. So you don't see it when they're just troweling the mud in because of that corner? No, because it's not the, even around that corner or smidge? You know, that would be my concern. The cable actually sits just a hair below the mat, so you can run a trowel across it all day long, and it won't snag it whatsoever. But if a guy takes the trowel and he's trying to clean out the excess, then it's up in the bucket, and you scoop it out and you spike it to the floor, that's definitely a possibility of nicking the cable. But the majority of the ones we find is where the helpers are cleaning out raw joints. Yeah, because I mean, this is totally different than pouring a leveler over top of one, you know what I mean, when you pour the leveler over, you can see if you got a spot that's weak, you know what I mean, you didn't get it covered all the way. Where this one, every one of them in essence is potentially could get hit. You know what I mean? You gotta, I think you gotta be a little bit more careful with the initial install of the mud. Um, now, part of the whole yeah. design of this is the way the cable sets into it. One, you have the uncoupling membrane, but two, you also have the cable recessed below the surface, mm -hmm. so you don't have to use any kind of self leveler, so it's saving more time and cost. You do have a little So once you set the cable, it, it, just like the Detroit, you, you fill the whole thing in with this. If you want to. Code. Or you can start laying tile at the same Absolutely. time. You don't have to. You don't have to skim coat it first. Let that set. Oh no! You just have to oh. fill everything and you then go. come back with your trowel edge. Mm -hmm. yeah. Back with your tile. Your, your, your gauge edge. Mm -hmm. okay. so let's Guys, there is nothing. Art is the best. All right, and I, I mean, it might take us 40 minutes. And I think the longest it took us what nine hours. Well, overall, it's nine yeah. hours of repair. Nine hours of repair. There was three cuts, so, and we had to find them all. Yeah, we'll find it. So if you, I mean, if you know you cut it, just tell us, you know, let us know. So.
And then on page, uh, right here on page 21, we're showing you how to waterproof it by putting the curdy band. But if you're going to do it inside the shower, like we talked about a little while ago, we'll get the curdy band and goes over the home. Just like that. Um, if we go to, uh, let's turn to page 33 for me. Okay. This right here, these are all our cable sizes. Dieter Heat comes in a 120 and 240 volt system. It needs to be on a dedicated circuit. 20 breaker, you cannot exceed 15 amps. Okay, that's all also on page 18 for you. Yeah, all right. Yep. So here, on this page here, these are all your actual sizes right here. The area is your square footage. So for example, like we like I told you we did that bathroom, and I said let's measure 50 square feet. So if it came back 50 square feet and we have a 120 volt system, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at our 120 volt and we're gonna go over to our area. And you'll notice that 50 falls between 42.7 and 51. Folks, you have to use the 42.7 cable. You can't use the 51 cable. Even though 51 is closer to 50, by the time you go every three studs, you're still going to have too much cable left over. Right? By using the 42.7, now you can move it in next to pop away from the wall or the commode or the register bed. That's how you do it. So it's, it's not rocket science. So less, again, less <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep, and then of course your 120 is your black and yellow, and uh, 240 is red board. So very very simple to do. It's not real hard to do. We also have a teacher heat uh, calculator online. Uh, if you'd like to go on www.schooner.com and use that, it's very user friendly. So whatever number you put in there, it's really going to put a nice uh, cushion on it to make sure that you know that you got a good number. But again, you know, it's not wall to wall dimensions. You cannot cut the cable. It's just the area amount, it's just the area you want to heat is all it's doing. Would you like to add anything else to that? I typically use our, the reference of 82 to 85 percent. So of my net square footage. So basically, once you deduct for cabinets, you deduct for a bathtub, not counting closets. You look at the footprint of what your actually net square footage is without any overages. I usually run 82 to 85 percent. That works out perfect every time. That keeps me two to three inches in perimeters. Six is away from the drain, eight is away from the heat source. So that's a pretty good rule of thumb to work off of. So far, all the ones I've worked on, that's worked out perfectly. Yep. So our calculator leaves at 65%, so it's really, really safe. Um, but again, keep in mind, if you're coming up a little bit short on the cable, you guys can also pull away from the wall a bit further. So if you figure and you're walking in the bathroom or the kitchen, wherever it may be at, your shoulders, you know, maybe two or three inches from the wall, but your feet are at least 10, or 10 to 12 inches out. So you have a couple of inches that you can play with there if you need to you know, gain some cable. Um, also, there's a new thing that's going to be implemented for 2019, that being a new handbook. Um, we're not allowed to talk about it. We specify a three puck spacing, which is three and a half inches. This is because of the output of our cables. We are now allowed to do, if, let's say you guys have a little bit too much cable. You measure everything and it's a little bit extra. So if you need to go a three two, three two spacing to use up the excess cable, we're good with that. And that'll be in the 2019 handbook. So we're not promoting a full on 3-2, but if, like I said, if you have some excess cable you need to pull back and use it up, we're in a 3-2 spacing and you'll be good to go. Nope, and then the very last page, guys, there's your warranty again on that. Okay. Any questions on Dieter and Dieter Heat that are not going to answer for you? We'll do testing during the demo. Okay. Okay, let's keep bringing on moving. How are we doing on time? Very good. Okay. Let's go into our shower. Okay. Why don't you guys pull out this? piece of literature from there here. This is our shower pamphlet. You might as well go ahead and grab the shower insulation handbook too. While we're here. Okay guys, this with our shower system. I mean, how many people are familiar with the shower system? This one right here? Yep, that's that one, and this one here too, sir. It's a uh, shower pamphlet. It should be the, towards the back of the pamphlet. Right there. Yep. There you go. That's it. Right there in your head. Okay. If you guys turn to this page right here, for me, we have two great pictures right here. We have a picture to the right, it's our old in water, out water traditional system. And we also have the picture to the right, which is the shooter system. 
Okay, guys. One of the biggest things with the Schluter shower system, yes, it's 100% waterproof, but it's a vapor tight sealed system. And vapor tight is the key right there. Your grouts and thin sets, again, are not waterproof. All right, so here, we all take a shower, right? We get done with our shower, we step out of the shower, and look at the mirror, what's on the mirror? Your steam and vapor, okay? So here, if we don't have a proper waterproofing membrane done behind it, the shower, with that, again, that steam is gonna get back through the grout joints and get back into your wall cavity. So there's where all your mold and mildew start. Now, there's a couple different ways how to do our shower system with our curdy and our curdy board, which we're gonna kind of talk about more up here and we'll do a demo for you. But it's a vapor retardant. So here, that the actual vapor goes through the grout joints and it hits it and it kicks it right back out. So we don't get the mold in the, the, in the shower. Okay? You might get orange, but that's just because you, you need to clean the shower and they shampoos and stuff. All right? But here to the picture to the right, this is a pan liner. This is another great system. How many guys in here do pan liners? Love it. Yes. Okay? One of the big things with the Schluter shower system is you can still do mud work with our system if you guys enjoy doing that. All right? Because with our body plant, it's got no If you enjoy it. Enjoy it. Exactly. Right. Don't laugh, guys. I'm a mud guy. I like doing mud work. It took me forever, guys, to get him to switch to Schluter. Trust me. And that. But how many are familiar with the Schluter, with the pan liner system? In here, how it goes in. Okay, I know I got a couple of them in here. You, you have a question? Nope. Oh, okay. You must just be itching your head, right? It happens. <laughs> anyway, just to kind of break it down for you a little bit, there's multiple steps in being done with the system like that. Right there, that's a minimum of four to five days in somebody's house done properly. Right? That's a lot of steps. Go ahead. So let me talk about that real quick. So typically, I mean, I've done a lot of traditional showers done with the old school mudway, both union, non union, that's with my background. Um, for me to do a traditional shower, water in, water out, doing every step per TCNA standards, I was at least three to four days into that shower before I was ready for tile. That's not full days because there's drying times in between, I wait for things. Um, that's using liquid applied membranes and so forth before I ever got to my point of tile. But keep in mind, a water in, water out shower assembly, um, it's water in, water out. That's exactly what it is. So water's going in, water's running down the drain, but the secondary drainage is the two stage where the water's wicking through the grout joints, and it's getting down to the pan liner, and it's weeping down into weep holes. So that's the second part of the drain. So with that being said, over time, those weep holes tend to get blocked up from calcium, lime scale, soap, shampoos, conditioner, dead skin cells. There's a lot of things that get trapped in there. Once it gets trapped, you have water in, water can't get out. So it basically becomes like somewhat of a little bit of a cesspool. With the Schluter shower system, because it's a sealed bonded unit, there's nowhere for the water to go except for down the drain. There is no weep holes, there is no pea gravel, nothing for it to block up into. So water is gonna wick into the grout joint still yet, no matter what you do. But when it hits the membrane, it can't get through it, so it's forced back up and down the drain. So it's a truly a sealed shower system. So timeline, um, you know, I can do a six by six or eight by eight Schluter shower, hanging the board, hanging the curdy, putting the pan in, putting the curdy in, completely waterproof or ready for tile in about six to eight hours. I could never do it the traditional system and hit every step along the way. A lot of guys will tell me that you know, they're old school, they do things old school ways, and they're 20 years old. Without, you know, not, not being disrespectful, but I was a young guy at one point doing this trade, but I also knew what old school was. So when guys ask them how they do the curbs, and they tell me to use backer board. Well, that's not old school. How do you do your walls? Well, backer board, that's not old school. Old school is when you're putting up the float sticks, and you're putting the lath up there, and you're actually floating mud across the walls. That's old school. Um, some of you guys in here have probably done this, what I'm talking about, it's a lot of work. So I like doing mud work, I like doing mud work on floors, not so much on the walls, because there's just not enough time or people wanting to pay the money to do mud walls anymore. Um, with that said, I mean, when you look at the TCNA standards for curb details, you're gonna find three curb details. One is gonna be a concrete curb, one is gonna be a foam curb, and the other one's gonna be a mud curb. So a mud curb is the way to go, um, unless you're using one of the foam curbs. So for traditional methods, I always took my uh, wire lath from the outside up and over my curb, into my mud bed and then pack everything in mud. And that was the correct way to do a true two-stage system. And unfortunately, there's a lot of guys out there today that has never been taught the correct way to do a traditional shower system. So this guy learned from this guy, that guy learned from Josh, Josh learned from David, David learned from me. So somewhere along the line, translation changed and shortcuts got taken. So to do things correctly, there's a lot of time involved in doing traditional systems. And we're trying to show you a better way to do it um, and time is money, so you can actually make more money by going this route. So.
Let's check it up in there. Anyway. So that right there, what Art was saying, that basically explains the no in water on water traditional system. You guys open up the pamphlet right here. Okay, there's a couple different ways how to do our shower system. Okay, one we can use our curdy membrane. Okay, this curdy membrane it's eight mil thick. With the curdy, you could put it over any solid vacuum. I could put it over any drywall, green board, blue board, purple board, cement board. You still want to kill your vacuum at it. All right, but here with the curdy, we all we need is a two inch overlap all the way around. That's you, you have to do that. Okay. Now, we get a lot of guys who are always asking, they're very, very concerned about you know, putting it over drywall. Okay, here, we're going to put it over drywall right here for you and show you. Now, on this little sample here, not everybody has it, but there is, it's called an ESR number on there, which is our evaluation service report number, which is very, very crucial. Okay, because that's in the TCNA, which is the Town Council of North America Handbook, that, that, EC, that ESR number is in there saying that this is, can go over any drywall, as long as you have a two inch overlap, which is big. All right, so again, this is going to take some time, and then Art's going to trial this. Uh, we're excited to show you guys. We just launched our new six foot by seven foot lower curdy. So, I mean, that's one way how to do it. We also have another way how to do it, which is by using curdy board. And how many are familiar with curdy board here? Okay, yeah, it's quicker, faster. And that to gut your bathroom all the way down to better studs, get a couple of three sheets of four by eight by half inch sheet of board, hold it with one finger, screw it every 12 inches with the fasteners and the screws, put a patch over it. And then take your samples. We're hanging tile before we even go to lunch, which is really nice. That's just another way how to do it. So down here in this shower pamphlet, we're showing you the actual components. Here, we actually are showing you our curdy board benches that we have. We also are showing you the curdy board curves that I talked about earlier when we were talking about detreat inside the shower. Here's our uh, shower ramp, and then also down here, these here are our polystyrene trays right down here. Okay. Nice thing with the polystyrene trays is that they're a quarter inch per pitch to the drain ready to go. All the way around, all four sides. So here, you know, if you have to shorten that tray up, just take the long utility blade that you cut up, 12 inches off, you know, shrink it down if we have to. Or if we're going to need to extend it, our biggest size tray that we offer is a six foot by six foot, 72 by 72. That's a big shower tray. So if you need to make it bigger, you're going to put dry pack, which is stiffer sand. But you're going to pack, pitch, and screw it to the edge of the tray. That's how you extend them. Once the dry pack's hard, then we just put the curdy over it. What's really cool is that we just launched. We just launched 16 new shower trays out, and today we're going to show you guys one of our new trays with it that actually has the curdy already on the tray, ready to go. We have three new trays. There are point drain trays. Uh, we have seven new point drain trays, and we have nine new line drain trays. Okay, but on the point drain trays, we have three sizes. It's our TT, which is our, third, our thinner tray. Uh, it's a 36 by 36, 38 by 38, and a 48 by 48. Uh, that are actually 7 8 inch thinner. So that way it'll help you get it down lower to do a very pretty shower for people. Because that's what people are looking for. Today we're going to demo that up here for you guys. We're going to we'll show you. We'll get into a little bit more in depth than that. We'll lever it on in here in the yep. So that talks about our trays there. Uh, down here we also have our niches. Uh, we have four different sizes. We have a 6 by 12, 12 by 12, 12 by 20 with an adjustable shelf, and a 12 by 28 with an adjustable shelf. So those are the four sizes there. Over here, we'll talk about some more line drains. I'll kind of do that stuff while Art's trowing over here. But here we have our nice pictures down here. Uh, actually, I brought the line drain in here with us up here. So later, if you guys want to stop us and check it out, here's all the new styles on it. We also have it in the four inch, which is nice. Uh, the four inch ones are heavier. So this one here, they just drop right in. And that versus, the, if you look right here, that you got the two screw heads, we have to take the two screws out to take the grate out to clean the drain. And then plus two, that on, on these here, the actual channel right around here is actually three sixteenths. The new one's about an eighth inch. So it's actually a sixteenth inch smaller to make it tighter. Over here, these are just showing you more of the shower components. Here's our curdy roll, uh, comes in different sizes. Our curdy board, which comes in eight different thicknesses from 3 16ths all the way up to 2 inch. There's our curdy band. We have our pipe seal, our mixing valve seal that we'll show you. And of course, we have our preformed corners, our inside corners and our outside corners ready to go. Uh, you flip over on the back. Here is, uh, for the time being, just the new, uh, these are just the polystyrene tray sizes, which are located on the back. And then here's also the sizes of the bench, the curve, and the niches that they come in for you. Uh, the other big thing, too, guys, I want to mention real quick 
is that there is the Schluter website, www.schluter.com. So you can go on there. We have our videos, our tips and tricks. There's a lot of all different stuff that's on that website that you guys can use for reference tools and stuff as well. This here is the uh, shower insulation handbook. I want you guys to grab this phone, please. This is a great tool. This is awesome here. You guys open this up, and you start flipping through this. Can you turn to page six for me? You have to call this is your shower. Page six right here. This is great, man. I mean, this is basically, it's like building a puzzle. Um, everything is labeled for you. Here we have everything numbered. We have the description of what it is. And then up here we have an actual drawing of a shower for you. And it's labeled so you know right where the piece of part goes. So you can put it right in front of you and build a shower. As you kind of flip through this, it's, it goes into all different types of shower assemblies. I mean, we talked about it again on page 10 of how to do heat heat inside of a shower. Uh, we talk about how to do our steam showers in here. Uh, as you go through farther into this catalog, we're showing you on page 20 of how to put curtain board up. Okay, today we're not going to do curtain board up today. We're going over solid backing. So right here it shows you how to hang it. Use our little fender washer. Uh, if you guys want to come up later and check it out, these are our new packs of washers and screws that are bigger now, 140 piece packs with them. But these little packs. Uh, the little fender washer, it goes every 12 inches. And then you'll use that inch and five inch screw and screw right into it. All right, now if you're going to put curly board on the ceiling, we recommend those every six inches versus every 12 inches. Uh, but it shows you how to do that. What's that? Just for more stability, uh, stable on top of the ceiling for you. Here on page 21, these are our niches. I'll show you how to go in. They go in 16 on the center studs. Uh, we are not going to put one of those in here today. But technically, you just take the niche and just flip it upside down, center it between it, just trace around it, and then take your utility knife, notch that part out, and then the actual niche will actually recess in. And you'll see right here in the middle picture here, you take the fender washers, you pinch it, and then screw it right in. Now, then what you have to do, because where the, you know, where, uh, where the board and the niche meet right there, we actually have to put a patch over that, all right? So technically what we always recommend is to go four inches above, out, and down, all the way around it. Take a whole piece of curtain and just completely cover it. And then when you get done, go in with a sharp utility blade and just notch out the curtain is all you got to do. The inside of our niches, guys, they're already pre-sealed at the factory. So you do not have to put curtain in, in there or anything like that. So they're ready to go for you. So as you kind of continue going through it, and we'll, you know, I'll talk about more of this stuff as arts column and stuff. Uh, here's our bonding flange. The biggest thing with the Schluter shower system is that with our bonding flange, we have no weep holes, which is awesome. So you don't even have to worry about using pea green oven or anything like that. All right? So that talks about how to put the bonding flange in, which we'll show you guys when we demo. Uh, coming on page 24, we're showing the actual uh, line drains and the regular drains. I'm sorry, line drains are on page 26. How to do, I'm, like I said, I'm going to kind of talk as Arch Collin today on things. I'm just kind of flipping through this real quick for you. Uh, on page, let's go to page 20, uh, page 31, real quick for me. These are different types of profiles that are used uh, for inside showers. Uh, we have profiles to put in during the insulation, or if you get done with doing an insulation, you realize water's still getting out, and you want to put a profile in, we have profiles that can go in afterwards as well. As we kind of go through on page 32 right here, this is kind of big. I like to kind of point this one out to you. This is doing a bathtub to wall connection. So if you're going to do a tub surround, and that, here we're showing you Curdy Fix. How many people over here are familiar with our product called Curdy Fix? Okay. A couple of you guys are, some of you aren't. Curdy Fix is our urethane sealant caulk. All right, it has 600 PSI bonding strength to it. All right, so here, basically, when we designed that product, we actually took the chemical off that melts foam. So you can use it on top to actually use curdy board and put curdy board together and build, like, you can build a house out of curdy board if you want to. All right, with that. So here, doing a tub surround, and that. If you read up on this, you know, it's hard to make that connection from that tub to that wall. So if you use curtain board and you put curtain board up, 
And that you want to leave it about 3 16 to a quarter inch shy of the tub. You know, mark it, cut it off. All right, and then what you're going to do is you're going to put blue painter's tape onto the actual face of the tub. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to shoot a bead of curdy fix in that whole crack all the way around. And then we're going to take our thin set, our unmodified thin set, and we're going to trowel on top of the curdy board down to where the curdy fix meets. And then your banding will go in and make that seal to the, the curdy band goes into the curdy fix and then they'll also go into the thin side. That's how you make that connection. So that way that whole crack is completely sealed with that curdy fix. All right. Another nice thing with curdy fix is uh, it actually bonds underwater with tile. I've actually tried it. It's pretty slick. I mean, there's about anything you can fix with curdy fix. Uh, it retails for about, I think, what, 20, 27 bucks a tube? And it comes in gray and white is what it comes in. Okay. So as you kind of go through there, that's on that. We're going to get into some more of the components for you. Uh, again, on page 36, we're showing you uh, different types of profiles that are used in here inside the shower, uh, which is really, really sharp. Again, there's the EKE profile. Uh, again, you, know, you can just read up on it. Uh, as you go through the back of it, you've got more of all the components. And then the very last page is, again, there's your manufacturer warranty book right there. So, okay. You guys have any other questions? Are we doing all right for you? All right, so I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead, uh, oh, one last piece of literature uh, that you guys also have in here. Here's, this is called the curtain board, a uh, little pamphlet. And if you guys open this up in, it just shows you how to do different things, how to build a curtain board, uh, which is really, really sharp. Um, one thing I wanted to point out. That bench seat they have on the front page, you have to like have a framing member. Nope, framing nope. Underneath. nope, it's all foam. And that stuff. Two inch for the seat, you got your inch for your supports, or you can also use two inch for your supports and your half inch across the face. And then when you go to make it 100% waterproof where the opens ends are, on the actual, like the white part, you got to put a piece of band over that. That's all to it. All right? If you're going to do wall partitions with it, now on the page seven right here, you guys see we actually have a new channel, which is the stiffener that actually just gets thin set. If you just put some thin set on the thing and just slide it right on there, there's your stiffener. Or if you want to use two pieces of curdy board, just thin set them and put them right together for you. And that's all it's to it. Once it's hard, you, if you put them on table saw, you can just square it right up. That's all it's to it. It's pretty slick. One of our big things, uh, uh, we're definitely not going to show you here, but how many of you guys are here familiar with our workshops that we do? Okay, we do over 300 workshops throughout this country per year at no charge for you guys. All right? We want you guys to come and show us what you know. We're going to turn around and show you what we know and make more money to find. All right? And what's really cool about that is we offer two different types of workshops. So we offer a part one, which is your basic beginner's class. So you're going to learn what Curdy is, Dietra is. All right? With doing that, okay, if you're more than 30 minutes from the hotel, we cover the hotel with no charge for you. We cover all your meals for you. We give you tools for coming to the class. So it's class and hands-on you're going to build. All right, so normally what we're going to do is we're going to bring you in the night before. So that way you can work all during the day and do what you got to do. You can drive to the hotel at 7, 8 o'clock at night, check in, get up. Next morning you're going to do the full breakfast buffet. We do a full lunch buffet. We do a full dinner buffet, drink tickets to the bar, complimentaries on shooter in the evening. Um, so basically we're wanting to dine pretty good. All right, and then during that course, you know, you're, again, you're going to learn, you're going to build. For the basic 101 class, the second day it's all shower systems. So inside, you'll go to class and you're going to go into the ballroom and you're going to build an entire shop. Now, we also offer our workshop two advanced class. Okay, that's pretty slick. Basically, that's all hands-on and less class. You're going to go to class for just the first part of the day, and then after that, you're going to build an entire bathroom. You're going to use all curtain board. You're going to put uh, Dietrich heat in. You're going to do barrier-free line drains you're going to put in. Uh, instead of us showing you how to put line drains in the floor, we also show how to build and put a line drain in for a vanity, for a sink. So use our curtain board to build your sink, and then we show with our ramp how you miter our ramp in four sections, put it in, and then put the actual 20-inch line drain in. So there's a lot of different things, and then we're also doing the third one, which is called an elite class, uh, which after you take part one and part two, the elite is where you come, all you're going to do is sit down and watch us do it. And we're going to do uh, steam showers, uh, showers in an hour. We're going to show you a lot of different things. So those are really sharp to look into. Uh, all you got to do is go on www.shooter.com, click on education, 
the entire United States is going to pull up. So click on whatever state. We are not paying for plane tickets. I have people ask me that. All right, we don't do that. But if you're out in California and you're visiting family out there and you want to attend the two-day workshop with shooters having on out there, we'll cover the two nights for you. All right, so it's a pretty slick thing, guys. And again, it's at no charge. So that's pretty good. So I just kind of want to let know coming up. What's that? We do. Part? We have our part two. Our last part two for the year is going to be in Independence right here at NBC Suites. As of right now, the whole workshop is completely full. Okay. But you can still come. Uh, but like I said, I still know on the hotel room right now. Uh, get with Art and we can, we can look into it for you if you want to time. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, but normally we do, we do two. Art and I are doing two in Cleveland. We do two in Columbus, right at, in Dublin, right there at the NBC Suites. We're on Rockside Road at the NBC Suites. And then we're in Dayton. We just started it last year in Dayton. We did it at the Holiday Inn. I'm not sure where he's planning on doing that. The next one this year. Uh, but as you go through, guys, we're showing you how you guys can put the curdy board uh, right up, right over a concrete block on a you know spot bonded and all that types of stuff there. All right. So any questions on the literature or anything I covered? Any other topics right now? Earlier you said that uh, grout and thin sets are not waterproof. Mm -hmm. right. So what makes this system waterproof if you only use a two-inch band it's overlap? A very good question. Stuff. If you look at our curdy fabric underneath the microscope, and that you'll see it's a ton of million little different types of weaves of fabric going all different ways. And then by when taking an, another piece of overlapping, it's going to weld itself right together. So that way, there's no water; it's going to penetrate. Now you can't do this on a job site, but with all the presentations and things I do, before I have, I still have it because I got a cardboard box this big and that high, and I would fill it to the top with water in it between eight to ten hours a day. I got a little curdy board boat that floats in it. If I can 100% waterproof and vapor tight cardboard box, you can put it over any solid that. Make sense? Yeah. I was just so, curious because it, yeah. it seems it's like a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little fibers that are in the actual. If you, like I said, take a take a microscope. You gotta look at it in a microscope to be able to see it. What if you just butt those together and then curry band it? Yeah, absolutely. There's there's different ways how to do it. Right, correct. So you, there's two ways to do it. And now you can actually take two pieces and then take the curdy band and do it. Uh, actually, on the curdy roll, yeah, right here. Um, you know, actually, let's do this. Way. This, oh, you know what? This Might be hard. To see. Okay, can you guys can you guys see this right here? Oh, yeah. From where the edge of the curdy starts to right where the actual grid line starts, right there. That is actually two and an eighth inches wide. So here, I can take a full sheet and overlap it right onto another sheet. So that way, you're eliminating tape and all this. And then here, we're going to show you how to do a complete one wrap all the way around. Art's going to show you guys that here. So, yeah, I'm glad you brought that up on that. Curdy, you can cut it with a utility knife, cut it with a pair of scissors. I cut it with a pair of scissors all the time, just quick, just push, mm -hmm. one quick swipe with it. And there's no wrong or right way how to put it up. Um, it's also got on the actual Curdy, it's got all different numbers up here at the top. This tells you how many lineal feet still left on the roll. And if you hang the Curdy straight on your solid backing, you can use the grid lines to line all your tiles up. And again, ESR numbers written right on it. So, looks like the ANSI number. Looks like the end of March 27th is part one workshop in, in uh, Dublin. When that's 2019, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. They, we just released them all. So, they're all out there now, yeah. ready to go. Yeah, and like I said, if you guys want to, I mean, we do them at a lot of casinos. I mean, at least. So, we're uh, up in <laughs> Michigan quite a bit. Fire Keepers Casino. We're, I mean, we're all over. And stuff. Like I said, check it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one thing is, uh, if you guys have your spouses that you want to bring, absolutely bring them. Their meals, everything is all covered. The only thing we frown upon is we do not want little kids. And that, that's the only thing we kind of frown upon. Because you guys are in trying to learn and we got a, baby, a brand new little one, a newborn, screaming in the back and you guys can't hear the presenter speak. That's the only thing uh, that we frown upon. But besides that, so normally when we go to the casino, sometimes we give cards out to go play. I, I, I was just up at fire keepers. I was like, oh my god, I didn't realize we're doing all this, too. And that's not fun. Yeah, part one, I guess obviously we're going to want to start on the. Uh... Yeah, now here's the thing, too, guys. We, we were talking about part one. Yeah. For guys in here that have already done a shooter, you guys are used to it, do you have to take the part one? Absolutely not. You can go right to part two. Absolutely. And that's stuff with it. But the good thing with part one is the instructors get so in depth. They, they talk about the TCNA, all the issues that are out there. And that why what's causing it and why Schluter's who we are and what we do to, to correct that. So that's one of the big things, that's all. 
But yeah, and again, there is class on it. Eric will speak about it and that stuff. So well, why don't we go ahead and take a 10 minute break? I'll find Porter and wrap him up somewhere and we'll mix up some things set for you. Yeah, you know, if you want to go on some vacation, I think it's a good trip. I'm going to go on vacation. I'm going to go on vacation. I never go on vacation. Every time I get scheduled, I'm going to go on vacation. This will be my first time ever installing this particular piece of curdy. I've installed thousands of feet of the other curdy, but not particularly this one. So, one of the tricks I'm kind of looking at is taking a paper clip, putting that top hole in the roll together. So, I'll trial out the wall, roll so far, clip it, and hopefully, pretty. That's going to work for me. We'll see how easy it makes it. So, that's one of the tricks I'm going to try. So, we're going to put this together. Um, my back's going to be for you guys, so we'll be able to talk as we go along here. So, again, this is a great opportunity for Q and A. Um, any questions you guys thought about there in the day here? Now the time to ask them. All right. So we talked about our curdy earlier. So like uh, like Art said, uh, typically what we're going to do right now is what Art's doing. He's lightly dampening the drywall. Uh, a couple things here. He's just giving it a good drink to open up the pores of the drywall and to get the dust off of it. Um, you know, any type of dust on on a drywall with insect be a bomb breaker real quick. It's the same thing with tiles on the back. You guys should always be wiping the back of your tiles off dry uh, with a towel to get the kiln release off the back. Because that white powder residue, again, is a bomb breaker. Exactly. Between them. So that's all he's doing real quick here. Not soaking it, just lightly dampening it. Getting good, good coverage with it to make sure. I will say this is well water, so it has a funky smell to it. <laughs> it's not me, I swear. Hey, well water. Hey, now. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, guys, again, like I mentioned earlier, you can put our curdy over any solid vacuum. So again, this is drywall that we're going over right here. Solid vacuum game, drywall, or any kind of symmetric board. So Art's got our curdy trowel, so we're going to use a quarter by 316 V9 trowel. So he's using our product called All Set, we've got the latex into it. So technically he's putting the thin set on the flat side of the trowel. And then he's working into the actual drywall good. And again, the flat side of that trowel is the most important side of a trowel. So you should be hearing that noise that he's scratching into, just like that. One of the tricks that uh, is good to do is to always you know, kind of work your way up. So this way you're pushing your thin set up. You're just starting at the top, trying to come down, and the thin set would be actually falling off the trowel that job. So, one of the big things you're going to see Art doing here is that he's not going to be putting any more thin set back into the bucket. He'll always keep the thin set on the walls or he'll start putting it to the next part that he's going to work on. Uh, all our trowels, uh, when you guys do come to the workshops, you guys do get a set of trowels. We can buy trowels right here as well. But the trowels are actually marked. So, if you're going to do deep trowel, we have a deep trowel. Uh, if you have uh, a curdy, we have the actual curdy trough. Same thing with the Dietcher heat and the Dietcher XL. So again, guys, this is our first time using this. I did just get the use, um, so you guys can get it. So we want to make sure that we're getting good coverage onto the drywall. Uh, you know, one thing I just, I had a, uh, one of the uh, gentlemen out here just brought up to me about was with our mixing valves, um, about, you know, how to, uh, you, you know, we just have a circular one right here that we're going to put in. But, you know, there's different types of mixing valves out there, different types of uh, angles that you guys got to do. And the way how you guys get around that is just to take our curdy membrane and get it as tight as you can get it, and then take our tube of curdy fix and shoot curdy fix around it to make that seal right there. That's how you do that. Okay. Um, this here is it's a valve that we sell. Uh, this is it here for the circular where you turn your water and water off. There is a wrong way to write way how to put this piece on. Okay, the 5 8 goes into the hole and your 3 16 is going to be sticking out. If you put it the other way and then you go to put the fixture on, it's not going to sit flush. So you'll be able to tell. Right So here, when we mix our thin set over there, you guys are just going to want to mix it to a good uh, fluid consistency. That's what, is what you want to mix it with. Um, again, uh, it's all set. It's got latex into it. Uh, if you do not use all set, 
We would rather, we want you guys to stick with unmodified thin stuff. With any other manufacturers, but make sure it's unmodified. Again, we also, like I mentioned, we have our curdy board, uh, the four eight, the half inch sheets. Uh, you, know, you guys can see right here, it's taking ours a little while to be trawling and stuff. And technically, if we had the four eight, the half inch sheet of board, screw it, tape it, we're already setting tile, uh, which is a lot quicker and faster. You guys just gotta figure out which is faster and quicker for you guys. Um, earlier, we were talking about our curdy board curves. I went out to the truck and I grabbed it. I wanted to bring this in and show it to you guys um, while Art's trawling right now. This here is the 38, uh, which is nice. You guys can see it. Uh, it's actually wrapped with 5 8 inch pin board, and we have the actual 2 inch supports right here inside. Uh, these 2 inch supports are designed for knockouts. So if we have to make a cut like right here, this is going to be weak, right? So all you do is take a rubber mallet or take my hand if I got a lot of strength and just push it, and it will actually just come out. Like right here, for example, I actually cut this one down to a 4 inch curve. And this piece here I did, I snapped it out. So all I gotta do is put more unmodified thin side on it, slide that piece right in there, lock it, trial my thin side, drop it in, and it is solid. It's not going anywhere. Okay? You can even drill into it, put shower doors on it. It's gonna support all that weight. So that's that right there. Also, too, on the curves, if you guys need to cut them, you guys can just use a long utility knife to cut it or put them on a table saw and rip it. It's the same thing with using our polystyrene trays. Um, when the, if you go to cut a tray, we always teach at the workshops, kind of like hold the, the knife like on an angle. So this way as you score it, you're going to put like a taper on it. So this way here, when you go to put it in, it'll allow it to clear through, past the wall, but it'll be tight fit up against the wall. Um, also too with our shower kits, uh, we sell the shower kits. Uh, with all the components that are in the box. So you can get a tray, enough curdy, uh, a polystyrene curb, curdy band. Uh, and some places sell it with the kit and some don't sell it with the kit uh, for the drain kit. Okay, so here we go. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to put it in. And like we were mentioning, I mean, there's different ways. We need to do a two-inch overlap. So the nice thing with this roll is, is that it's going to allow us having to do a two-inch overlap or come two pieces together and tape it together. So Art's just gonna kinda lightly tap it, put it in. He'll come back, use the binder clip, clip this so this way here it stays tight. So he can come back and he's just gonna use his taping knives. Uh, one of the good things is, is if you notice right now what Art's gonna do, he just made a crease coming across the center. So now he's gonna start going Two different directions. He's going to start going upwards and then he'll start kind of coming back down. And he's putting medium pressure on it. So what he's doing is he's pushing all the air off. We don't want to put too much pressure on it because if we push too much pressure, you're going to push all the things set right out. And that's a, that's a no-no. So here, again, you can just see, you know, he's getting his access. Instead of putting it in a bucket, he's just going to throw it on the other side of the driveway. Uh, you can use uh, taping knives from any size. Uh, right now, if you've got a six inch, you can use eight inch, whatever works for you. One is, uh, if you do decide to use taping knives, uh, I've seen a lot of guys use a flat side of the and do that, that's not the way. But if you do decide to use a taping knife, you know, what you want to do is you want to rub it on some cement on both sides and knock that sharp edge off. You don't want to have too sharp of an edge, that way if you slip, you puncture it. Okay, if you would happen to do that, Slip and, you make, slip and you make a little nick into it. All we do is cut a little five inch piece of patch and put a patch over it, that's all we need to do. So again, what Art's doing is now he's pushing downwards. Getting out the air bubbles. It's also, like, you notice I didn't tape the drywall seams. We don't have to tape them with curdy either, so we can go right over top of those. If you guys, if, if, if for some reason they are taped, then you guys should actually put a primer over the tape and all that. So like Art said, don't, we don't tape it. Okay? It's hard to see for some of you guys in the back, but I talked about the ESR number. There's the ESR number, that evaluation service report number right there, stating again, you can go over any, any drywall. So it's right on there for you. 
It's got the ANSI number right on it. Uh, we always get the question too, uh, is it wrong to put the grid lines up against the wall? You can put it on however you want to put it. But again, the grid lines are there, so if you get it straight, it's a marker to line all your tile up with. Uh, basically, uh, I mentioned earlier uh, the way to cut it, a pair of scissors, utility knife, however you want to cut it. Um, one of the big things when you do the Schluter shower system, uh, and what we do is pre-cut everything, guys. Get everything cut, labeled. You know, if you know, if you got a partner you're working with, like for example, uh, I could have came, Art could have came in and framed this form for me, and if he had to be on another job site, he could have wrote a black marker all over that drywall, and that gave me all the measurements that he needed, and it's not going to affect that at all with that curtain going on. Okay. Typically, is that how you would build a shower with the drywall and the the curdy board? Yeah, I mean, any solid back. I mean, again, any blue board, purple board. Some guys still use smoke Any board. type of drywall mm -hmm. or cementous board. Yeah. Even fiber cementous board, which is fine. Why wouldn't you just use the regular curdy board and, and not? If you're, yeah. studs, yeah, if you're down to studs, yeah, if you're down to studs. Absolutely makes the most sense to use curdy board. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Cost, cost wise. I, I don't I don't know you have to check with it. The biggest yeah. thing is if you uh, if you already have board up, it's more cost to use the board, only because you don't have the demo to put back there. But uh, if you go up and down stuff, it's way faster for you guys to just spend a whole life on the board instead of buying the board, putting that board up and then trying to go out. One thing to look at when you factor in the cost of curdy, it's equal to the cost of two coats of liquid applied. So it's no more than usually really the liquid, the cost is no more. So what you're gaining is time. Mm -hmm. and, so, and a guarantee to what the nail thickness is. You're not guessing if it's waterproof or not. Yeah. A lot of times with, with liquid applied membranes, guys, when they get rolled on, when they dry, they shrink. And if you don't get it quick enough, then that is, it's going to be... Uh, I'll be honest and I'll tell you guys, I have done a lot of liquid prior to Schluter, traditional methods, and knock on wood, I've never had an issue. But what I did lose is a whole lot of time. So time is of the essence. So liquids work great if you get the proper mill thickness, um, but it takes time to do that. So this, there's no guesswork. It's 8 mil polyethylene film, right from the factory, you trawl it on a wall, embed it, and you're done. What's that? No chemical smell. No, like nothing. There. <laughs> Even our curdy fix, nothing in there to get you going. Right. Some guys think it's a bummer. <laughs> <laughs> this here is your pipe seal valve. We're not going to put this on. So I think you, you can, put it on. Yeah, he'll put it on. But here, technically what this is for is for the head of the shower, uh, where the neck comes out at. So it's uh, our new one. It's universal. So it's no wrong or right way. I'll put it on. What's also nice about this is that with it, it allows you to pull this to expand if you, know, if you have a hard time getting it over the pipe, that way you get it right on. Any questions on anything that we've talked about so far on any of the systems? That curtain shower he's using, what size notch is that? That's an eighth inch by eighth inch. Great question. If you do not have a curry trowel, we do recommend a quarter by three sixteenths B notch. Is what we recommend. Yeah. So one thing too, you guys notice is I'm reaching and I can reach while I'm on my knees and standing up again, but I can't reach. So it's trying to limit my movements again, saving time. If your wall's moving this much, don't put tile on it. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, it's a problem waiting to happen. Again, for a demo wall to move and get taken down, it's perfectly fine. You know, you notice I'm trawling everything in one direction. So you can go vertical, horizontal, it's up to you guys. But that helps you evacuate the air out of the membrane. So it makes it a little easier to install it. And again, like I mentioned earlier, how he's pushing up in one direction. That way he's pushing up and falling back. So as of right now, what would you say, Art? How long have you been you know, doing this? About five or six minutes. About five, six minutes. Okay, so now he's going to go ahead and roll that into the other inset.
he's going to do is he's going to take his taping knife and he's going to put pressure and he's going to push that into the actual corner of the wall to make it tight. Just like that. And again, I mean, you don't have to use a six inch taping knife. You can use the flat side of the trowel and do it. But just to us, it's easier just to be able to do it like that. two-inch overlap all the way around. There's different ways how to do it, especially with our inside and outside corners. Some guys like to put all that stuff on first, and then do it, and then come back and put the sheets over it. Or, you know, like here, what we always do, the biggest thing with doing a shower, work your way out of the shower and that stuff. So that way you can see that you made all your connections. Good question. Personally, we show this, and we show the demo online, doing three walls. If the walls are perfectly plumb and square, that's awesome. If they're not plumb and square, myself, I'd start the back wall, wrap it two inches each side, run one sheet on this side, one sheet on this side, and I'm done. So a two inch overlap in any direction, so you don't have to use the banding, you can just run this around a little bit longer. That's fine too. I'll be honest, I like it, it's pretty nice. It saves a lot of time when doing it this way. Here I cut one piece, otherwise I'd have cut four pieces. Yep, because like, uh, for example, like if we were using our smaller curdy, we would have had to start more over and wrap it on, and then we would have to bring another piece and tie into it or overlap that or butt up to it and use the piece of curdy band going all the way down. You overlap that two inches instead of putting the, the curdy band. Yep, right. And in the two inches from the erection, it's not like a roof joint we have to shed water. So what's happening is the fleece is actually laminating itself together with a minute amount of thin sets in between it. At that point in time, what's called capillary action takes place, which is moisture wicking out to the open area. Once that happens and it seals off, the water molecule is too large to penetrate back to the seams. So it's totally sealed out. So coverage should be like a grilled cheese sandwich. And that's what we're looking for. If you're putting it on, you check it. You see that? We do not. It took off way too much thin set. So if you're embedding it too hard for that type of application. So again, grilled cheese sandwich that you're looking for, it's kind of same thing with the D -trial as far as coverage goes. If you pull it back and you, know, you check the coverage and you see like that, just like what Art just did. You just add a more thin side to it, just like that. And then you put it back in, now he's just taking the safety knife and running over. Again, if your wall's not going over David, don't put tile on it. Wait a Just saying. Too late. If you order it in studs and you use curdy board, how thick of a curdy board do you have to have? Half inch. Half inch. Half inch. And it'll Very be rigid question. and yep. seal. Oh, it's yep. uh oh. <coughs> Yep, half inch. I'm gonna pretend there's a hole right there. So technically you just put the thin set around that, do what he's doing there, just center it, smooth it out all the way around. You know, one of the good things um, too is that, you know, if you're not going to set tile on it that same day, then I would get in a, you know, a good habit just to take a sponge and just go over and, and wipe the thin set down. So that way you're not getting any heavy buildup on it. You don't have to clean it, but just knock off just, any rough ridges that you may exactly. have sticking out. Okay. So here, what we're going to do, we're sticking with the curdy trowel. And if you notice here, we you do not have to wet the curdy at all. I mean, again, we had to wet the, the drywall. We wanted to open up those pores and get the dust off. But since we got the curdy on there, we just went ahead and trowel right around. Yep, I already did. Yep, all good. Okay. Again, now Art's going to go ahead and put the thicker part in. Just smooth it out all the way around. That's all that's to it. So what do you guys think of the new coating roll? Do you guys like that? Mm -hmm. 
Art, what'd you think? Better than I thought it was going to go. <laughs> I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little nervous in front of an audience doing it, but it's all good. Okay. So what we're going to do here, guys, um, you know, and when I started, when we were talking about the shower components, we were just talking about the polystyrene trays. Uh, this right here, what we're going to set, is this is our new shower tray right here. It already has the curry membrane on it, which is another step that is already done for you guys. All right? So the, this tray right here, um, it, it's our TT, which is our thinner tray. So we make them in the 36 by 36, the 38 by 38, and the 48 by 48. This tray thickness is 7 eighths. So it's actually a thinner tray for you uh, to help with barrier free. A lot of people are looking to do barrier free showers. All right? The biggest thing with the Schluter shower system is we are into the water. Control back there. It's Quarter trouble. degrees. To your left, it's outside the wall already. So when it comes to barrier free, Annette, you know, again, we're into the waterproofing. Okay, we're not going to tell you how to cut your joists to drop it to, to be able to put a, uh, a tray in like that. So let's back up on that. Cool. So a lot of times, and I just had this conversation the other day, a lady actually seen something in the magazine she wanted to do in her bathroom. Not every homeowner's house is going to be able to have a barrier-free application. So there's a lot of limitations. So in order for something to be barrier-free, no curb, something has to recess, something has to raise. So sometimes you can actually take the floor out, the main floor off the joist, cut it out the size of the shower pan, and you can sister down below with two by fours glued and screwed to the joist three quarters of an inch low. Then in between the joists, you can actually put three quarter inch plywood in with proper blocking to support the short ends. Once that's said and done, you bought three quarters of an inch, which is what we're simulating here. So here's a three quarter inch subfloor. We're simulating this is recessed and fixed with the joist. We'll put the tray on top, Dietra, Dietra XL, or Dietra Heat to bring up the height of the tray. So now we have a barrier free application. If that's not feasible and you can't do that, sometimes we have ramps that you can use our ramps to make that work as well. So again, not every home is going to be capable of having a barrier free based on the limitations you get into. You get into some that's got eye joist, um, that's a real big issue. So I do know that there's a company out there now that's making uh, hangers for this application so you can actually put the hangers and frame in between. So a lot of limitations you get into. So again, you have to look at the job and assess it as it comes up. I was going to do barrier free at my house and we opened the floor up. We had duct work, we had plumbing, we had electrical. It's like, that's not happening. So, end up with a curb. So, curves can be cut down. I think David showed you guys bottles or no. So, they can be cut down in height, make them lower. But keep in mind when you cut the curb down, you also got to look at the aesthetics on the inside as well as the outside. So, if you do a two inch outside and you have an inch and a half or inch tray inside, it means you have a little sliver of tile under that curb. So, I've seen these done to where people um, have put the drains in the center, which directs more of the water to that location from four points. With that being said, they've actually cut the curb height down to the width of the height of the shower tray. More of that in place, ran the waterproofing out and over onto the Dietra on the floor or Dietra heat, made a waterproof connection. Then they'll put a granite seal in there, which is usually three centimeter, so inch and eighth. Um, therefore, they have their water uh, stop right there. So it's another way to get a really low threshold going into the bathroom. So there's a lot of options you guys can get into with those. So as David mentioned, when it comes to um, changing the structure, we will never tell you how to do that. We're going to recommend that you guys consult a structural engineer for that type of application. So, yeah, that's the, that's the best way to go about it. All right. So today, carry on. Oh, so today this is our uh, this is our 36 by 36 tray right here. Is what we, is this? 38. Oh, 38. Okay, 38 by 38 is what we're going to set. So here, uh, what we're doing is number one, art lightly damping the wood. Again, get the dust off of it because we want to make sure we're not having any type of a bond breaker between it. So he switched trowels, all right? So he's using a quarter by three eighths inch notch trowel to set our trowel. The nice thing is with this tray right here, these trays are now that are more, they're a lot more durable. Um, what's oh, on the, the um, density? Is density, that's up. it. The density is what, what it is. So it's more stronger. So here we're going to go ahead. We're going to go ahead and rake it. Um, good practice, like I was saying, get your trowel marks going on one, one way, so that way it helps allow airflow to, draw, to come through to help dry the thin set. But you know, if you're just putting the tray down, it's not so crucial because you're going to actually work the tray into the thin set and stand them on. So directional trawling, we're going to talk about it. If I did this, I'm going to try and set tile in here, which we're going to cover out here in a short bit. When you're trying to embed the tile, or even a shower tray, and you're trying to embed it and you're trying to work it into it, it's hard to collapse the columns of mortar because there's trapping air in between. When you do it directional, you can kind of walk at it and push it opposite ways. Then you can actually get the trawl lines to embed correctly and flatten down. I'll show you some of that out here when we get to the Dietra part of it. 
If you also notice here, with our new trays, our tray, the hole is a lot bigger inside this tray right now. Okay? So we are not going to cut the hole for the substrate this big either. So down here, we're going to still use our template that we give you, which is a four and a half inch. For the, hole. the reason why this hole is so big to be able to get the trays thinner is that they actually had to go inward to actually get it for the, for the durability of it, the density of it. So also keep in mind these trays and center rings are made to snap out. Does that want to stay in the bucket tonight? So these are made to snap out. In a drain kit, um, currently you're going to have two sets of uh, styrofoam blocks. One's really thin, which is a grayer color, and one's a white color. It's a little bit thicker. So ideally, if you're in a situation where the plumber has to set your drain and you guys can't do it based on code, at that point in time you're going to give him those little styrofoam blocks and a bonding flange only. So with that being said, he can set the drain, you guys come back in, it's ready to go. You'll pull the blocks out, you'll separate the section of the tray. You're going to thin set the floor, top and bottom of this piece, slide it under the bonding flange. Then you can proceed to put your tray in place. And that's what those are for. Also, if you're going to do a mud base, I'm a mud guy, I like doing mud, so I know you guys laughed earlier about that comment, but uh, I like mud, it's simple. Uh, with that being said, if you guys need a mud bed, you can take those blocks, get them leveled up on the floor where it needs to be, and you can measure and cut down your PVC or ABS uh, um, tailpipe piece, get it glued in place, locked in, pull those out, get your mud up underneath of it, supporting a bonding flange, and then you proceed to pack the mud around the perimeter and then put your slope into it. So the nice thing about doing mud with the Schluter system is you don't have to use chloralloy or any kind of pan liner of any sort. You don't have to have a pre-slope, so you're just doing one slope and done, that's it. So it makes it real simple. So we'll go ahead and put our tray right in. And now, where you can see... It's a good idea to take a piece of cardboard, put over your tray and walk on it, put it in place. Whatever you do, guys, don't wear high heels this day. Not mentioning names, but you know who you are. Just saying. So you can see he's doing the Schluter shuffle right now on it, working that polystyrene into the thin set. By bringing this up three quarters, you guys can see we're almost at a barrier free right now. And once we put the Dietra XL right in, or Dietra heat, oh, that flush to it. If you had a joist right there in the middle, could you cut that? Slide no, like six inches or so? not at all. No. If you cut the joist, you're taking away loads of the no, floor. No, not the joist. Cut the cut I'll the, the drain center. Can you say it again? Yeah, can you cut that piece you just put in to the right if you need to move it over? You can't like cut it, but you can shift the tray over and cut the tray off if need be. And then just mud uh, the difference on the back side of it. That's all. But yeah, if any joist is in a way, then yeah. that would be addressed prior to that. So, but if you guys decide not to use these trays with Curdy already on it, and uh, you still use our polystyrene ones that you have to still put the Curdy on, then you still use the curtain trowel, the eighth inch by eighth inch trowel. You can take the flat side of the trowel and run across the polystyrene, fill all the little traps in it, and then break it. Cut your piece of Curdy and roll the Curdy, and take your taping knife and work it real good. So it's tight on the tray. But to this here, I think it's pretty sharp because it's a lot quicker and faster. You know, we're just trying to speed up the time even faster for you. So here, what Art's doing right now is he's actually putting our inside corner in. Uh, what's nice about that inside corner is, is that it's already notched for you. So from, uh, do you have an extra one of those? Or is that the one nope, that's the one I brought. Okay. So from, from the outside to the inside of the notch, that's exactly two, two and an eighth. It's the same thing on the other side going. So here we always get a lot of people always saying that might, they're concerned sometimes about the buildup in the corners. So if I would take my tape measure and I measure from that inside point to my next inside point, that would be the size of a piece of the band that goes on the back wall. So that way I'm not getting any buildup into the corners. What's also nice about that inside corner is that you have to wrap the polystyrene curve. If you take that and flip it upside down, it's a perfect 90 degree bend for doing it on top of the curve as well. Any questions so far? So you said you put the band just even with this. I'm going to show you here momentarily. Yeah. So because we're doing a barrier-free application, before I run the waterproofing, I can go ahead and run a piece of band now and stop at the tray edge, put my Dietra in, and run a piece two inches over. Or I can put the banding and um, the Dietra on first, and then run the banding all the way down. So keep in mind, barrier-free, we want to be uh, waterproof beyond the footprint of the shower. We also want to do the floor so everything's tied in together. So now what Art's going to do here, Art's going to put the Dietrich membrane down here, okay? So he switched trials again. Uh, it might be hard for some of you guys in the back, but over here, 
Hard's got a whole bucket of trowels of all different sizes, different trowels. That's even for tile coverage and stuff too, as we'll see here in a little bit. But here he's switched, and now he's using the Detra XL. Detra XL uh, trowels. It's our quarter by quarter inch notch trowel. Should be right next to you. And one thing we didn't that um, I want to bring up to you guys too, inside that Detra folder that we were working out of earlier. David? I'm sorry, what? Wood float. Oh, here. Nope. This right here is our new Dietra Heat Dual, which is our thermal break. Uh, this is Dietra Heat. This is a uh, 516 stick, and the regular Dietra Heat is a quarter inch stick. Uh, the Dual is designed to go over concrete slabs. So this way it heats up 70% faster. It's going to keep all your heat up on top, which is going into the slab. And also with the thickness of it, it uh, it's the highest for uh, points per sound detonator at 20 points. So the 20 points is achieved in a delta rating. And delta ratings which contribute to sound on a job site. So if you get into like a high rise, um, such as like a apartment complex or a condo complex or a townhome complex, and you have to hit certain sound decibels for the floor for transfer, so 20 on it, just a product alone, is really high setting on that. So the Chi that was pretty good. So. so now another thing that Hart just did, which you guys probably, I don't know if you guys picked up on, he's going back and he's banding. So all of a sudden he switched back to the Curdy trough. So now he's back to the 8 inch by 8 inch trough. Because if you start putting too much thin set on there, you're gonna get, it's going to be hard to work with. Uh, with our Curdy band, the Curdy band's 4 mils, like I mentioned. Um, here, when you uh, take it, and you, it's five inches wide, so if you fold it in half and put a crease into it, that way you're going to get your two inches going each way. So he actually put the crease up against the wall, and he took his taping knife, pushed it into the crack, and now he's just smoothing it out. Normally you start about halfway and go one way, halfway the other way, and the same thing on the bottom. So like if you were going to be using the curtain board, the, the half inch thick, would you still put that up first and then put the base in, or would you put the base in and then put the... the no, I'd put the curtain board in first and then put the base in. Because okay. you want to make sure the curtain board is all the way and screwed in tight into the studs. What are you doing next? Oh, yeah. I'm going to put the tile in the best in the drain. Actually, I'll put the tile in the drain first. Cut. So we're going to pretend my plumber has access to this down below, so you can come into it later. Here, this is our Bonnie flange right here, guys. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, it comes in ABS, uh, which is what I got in my hands, and then we got a PVC as well. Uh, it does come with the extension on it for your pipe, but we just have it cut off to do the demo, so it drops in and doesn't hit the floor for us, okay? But again, here, there's no weep holes in it, which is nice. All right, so what Art's doing is he just took thin set, and he actually put the thin set all inside. We have to make sure you do that. We got to make sure that we get full support underneath this bonding flange. You'll be amazed that sometimes we see people just drop them in. All right? So if you guys have access to plumbing below and they're going to connect it later, great. If not and you have to do it during the installation, drop this in before the mortar. You're going to measure down to the stop of the P-trap and the stop in our drain. You're going to measure and cut your piece of ABS or PVC, put it in dry, drop it in. If it fits, when you let go, it's not pushing back up. You got the right height. Go ahead, pull it out, clean it, and glue it. Put the mortar like I did here. Reach down inside your P trap, clean it, and glue it. Put this in, and make a connection all at once. Do a little twist just to lock it in place. That's all there is to it. And you guys can see how the thin set came up through the traps. The trap is the strongest shape out of all the shapes. So by going forward, backward, forward, backward, when you turn it, it's going to get it into a, a tighter locking position. So now what Art's doing is keep coming back with the flat side of the trial, and he's knocking that all off. So we're getting even closer. Okay? So our last step that what we're going to do next is when we buy the trays that come with the curdy on it, we are going to get a gasket right here. And this gasket's already pre-done for you. It's already cut, which is nice. So you don't have to worry about cutting that. So here what we're going to do is we're going to put that gasket, that gasket, fits that exact diameter of that tray perfectly all the way around. So now what Art just did is he actually just pushed, pushed it in lightly. Okay, so you're going to tap it. And then in a second, he's going to come back with his taping knives. 
and he's going to you know, put medium pressure on it, get the air bubbles out of it. But then what he's going to do is he's going to come back right where the cutout is of the curdy to the drain. He's going to make sure that that is tight right there and make sure we made a solid connection all the way around. We don't want, we got to think like water. We don't want to have any water getting up back up underneath it. <coughs> yeah, that's, you know, that's a good point. Though. Now, when you guys mix your pin set, you want to make it to a loose consistency. And all you're doing is taping. You know, just put it together. And then when you go to set tile, then you got to make it to the consistency of the tile. Okay? So that's all that's to it. What do you guys think of the new trays? That looks pretty flat. Yeah. Did it slope? Yeah, right. it's page four inch inch per foot. Yeah, four inch per foot. So it's only about a quarter inch then from maybe maybe three eighths of an inch from end to the center. From Actually, center. this would be uh, three five. Uh, maybe you're gonna be like a half inch. Actually, gonna be more like almost half inch. Yeah. yeah. So because it's a thirty eight inch tray, yeah. so quarter inch per foot coming to the center point of it, you're gonna be right about uh, right by half inch. So I need the drink simply. Okay, so guys, this right here, there's three components right here. Go ahead and talk about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set our drain. There's three components. Here's your drain rate right here. Okay, this is your height adjustment column. So here we have a cut and then we got a bevel. So we're going to take our cut, we're going to put it on, and we're going to snap it on just like that. Okay? This is the lateral adjustment rate. This is going to allow this to move up and down. Okay, what's one of the nice things is in case the flow goes here we actually have small traps and we have two large traps. There's a smooth side and then we have a side that's got little ears on it. Okay? The little ears go down, so the smooth side goes up. So we're going to line that up with our two large trap slots. So we're going to get it about this far apart. All right? And then what we'll do is we recommend take blue painter's tape and cover this and make a gasket of this. We don't want to get thin set inside here. That way if you're trying to cut it out, you're going to nick up it all. And then what you'll see Art do here in a minute, he's going to put a bead of thin set all the way around this lip underneath here to make sure we get a good seal to it. Any questions on that? He's doing that as you're setting your tile. Correct, that's yep. when this part goes in. That piece goes in as you're setting your tile. Correct. Mm -hmm. yep. So I would actually, if I was doing this on a full tile installation, I would actually drop this in place, dry lay everything, mm -hmm. start picking up, work my way out, and mud it as I go. But if you don't get support into this, then you're going to have movement at the drain location. So there's no gluing of that into the, into the drain or the... No, this the is all locked sink. in with mortar. It's all locked in with inside. Mortar and then the trapezoids, which yep. is locking it all together. So... As David mentioned, when Mr. Schluter is trying to find a way to anchor this in mortar, what would have the best holding power, when he looked at all the different geometrical shapes, he found that the alternating trapezoid, the other the direction, would actually give it a really good strong hold and locking in both forwards and backwards. Similar to a dovetail. So, mm -hmm. Very similar to a dovetail. Who said that? Yeah. So we got on the next lip down here, you can see how Art put a ton of thin set in there. Well, not tons. Enough to fill what, uh, what size of knots did you use, Art? Quarter. Okay. What size of Knox trowel do you guys usually use to set those eggs? Yeah, I, honestly, what, what size do you guys use? An eighth inch by eighth inch truck? We're using a quarter by quarter inch Knox trowel to set those eggs. So you want almost an almost a, uh, 85% coverage to the back of the eggs. Always talk about that. So, yep. in a wet environment, you need at least 95% transfer of mortar to tile to floor. In a dry environment, you need 80% transfer so that's per TCNA standards. With that being said, when you're embedding tile, a lot of people try and use an 8 by 8 notch trowel because they don't want to squeeze out the joints. The problem is if you're not getting transferred to the back of the tile, it's not getting embedded and the water is going to wick into it and eventually it's going to have something pop because there's open rib structures underneath that's not bonded. So again, it's, it's extremely important to get at least 95% or better transfer of mortar to tile to substrate in any kind of shower so, or any other kind of wet application. So by taking a quarter by quarter, we can trowel it out here, comb in one direction, and we'll flatten the ridge line down, and that'll allow us to put it in place without getting too much uh, squeeze out through the joints. And whatever you do, if you have thin set squeezing out, remember the conversation earlier with the heat mat and the uh, utility knife? Not a good thing for helping you do the next day. 
because I've seen that actually happen. You pull up the tile and there's two inch cutouts of 30. <laughs> Side just a little bit here. It's not much thin. We just low. load it off and back drag it. All he's doing is not knocking those ridge marks down. I think the mosaics are behind you, right? Mm -hmm. You guys, when you guys go to put the mosaics in, you might get a little goose each through it, and then you can get it out. But the majority of it, it you won't, and it'll be solid, it'll be fully embedded. So now what I'm going to do, are you not going to the mosaics? I am. Oh, you're doing tile cover? Oh, okay, it's not straw. Basic tile. Always get rid of the sticker first. So this is just with the, if you guys didn't hear, he's using an eighth inch by eighth inch straw. Drop a loop behind you. So you get a good bond coat to embed this into. No, no, I mean with the eighth inch trial, if you would have smoothed it out, like you did with the This one, if I smooth it out, I'm getting already this coverage on the back because it's flattening it down even more. So the quarter by quarter, we're actually flattening it down, and we're getting about a true 316s times all said and done to embed it into. So this actually isn't bad, believe it or not, on a flat floor. So it came out pretty decent. So usually we pull this up and we see this all over the place, which means it's not getting proper embedment. And every tile is different. So the thicker the tile is on the back with the lug, the harder it's going to be to get the proper coverage. So. Push me more sheets of those. Hmm? I got them. Do you have more? I have more. Yeah, grab another sheet. That'd be awesome. Shoot him, we'll knock that one in, see the difference in coverage. So, any questions so far that you guys have seen, or have you guys encountered any kind of issues? Or so, so, nothing has to go between both of those different materials there? Just going to. Oh, okay. I'm just trying to get this in and run the band oh, down okay. it. Was... So, what I'm going to do is just kind of work my way out of the shower. Mm -hmm. So, instead of working with a wet thin set, just leave it right attached and cut it out. See, there's actually quite a bit of difference in coverage there. Pick that one up, David. So this is achieving proper coverage you should see under the tile. So that makes a huge difference, believe it or not. All right. So with that being said, Tap the tile in. Mm. 
you can control the squeeze out because you can see it coming up in the tile. <clears throat> so you can see your embedment. Once you're getting some squeeze out up in there, you know you're getting the back transferred in because it's being compressed. So once it's done the drain, you want to just recess it down a hair below or flush with the tile. And rocking motion works out pretty good. You can take it back of your utility or knife and you do one of these. Totally up to you how you guys want to do it, as long as you get it embedded correctly. At this point in time, you want to make sure you clean it out really good. So you don't want to come the next day and start trying to clean it up. So clean it away with any scrunch and wet. That was the purpose of that lateral adjustment ring to allow that to do that. Any questions? The tile didn't go under the drain. No, the drain, the drain grate went below that. It just went down just a little bit. As they were saying, like the nice thing is by putting a blue gasket on it to tape all that, just leave the tape alone. It's this way it keeps the things up and going into it. Just raw. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and continue with our Dietra heat out here real quick. Get the Dietra heat put in. And then we're going to do some tile coverage for you guys. Show you some different size tiles put on with different sizes and different tiles. We're going to finish the banding too. Yep. So what Art's doing here now again, he went back to the to the uh, quarter to quarter inch trowel. Lightly dampen the wood, taking a flat side, then he's burning that thin set in. You guys want to hear that scratch. That way we know we're going to get uh, good, good coverage with it. Now if you were to do a curve, like where would you put the curve in right now? Like, you put your mat in, like you make sure it's working for the curve. Yeah, that would be work. Work. right. You just mold that down. Yeah, you set a curve in. Absolutely. Yep. And then uh, with uh, if you had another curve coming this way, right. we had a curve coming this way. Right. Our outside corner, you got an outside corner right here? I didn't bring any of them. Okay. With our outside so corner, if you guys take that outside corner and you flip it upside down, there is your perfect uh, corner going inside. And all you gotta do is drop an inside corner inside, and put a little piece of bone over the top. That's all to it. So again, I could have banded that inside, but I decided to wait to put the membrane down. Just banded all the way down the whole thing to be done with it. It's also too what's nice about Dietro and Dietro Heat is once you put the membrane down, guys, you can walk on it, kneel on it, and start setting tiles immediately on top of it. Uh, with a big what our team here, this is a no-no. We don't want to do a tap, 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 round, round. All right? What we're going to do here is we're going to show you. So when we go to lift it, you can see, Carla, there's that, that's the type of coverage we don't want to be seeing. You can see at least 90% transfer on this particular back or better. So what you can do is you're laying this weight in. You're going to work in the fleece in. Or we're going to make a, a, a roller as well. It holds a 50-pound bag of things that you want to roll it. That way you're not underneath. Nice. So it's really working that in real good. Just like that. One of the nice things too is that he's using a wood flow. All right, you could use a rubber flow. Yep. He could use a rubber flow, but rubber gifts. At least wood is not going to give. So this way he can lay all his weight into it and he can put it into it. Now these things you get going you tend to catch and flip up on your wrist. So it makes it a little bit harder to do. You can use it. But earlier somebody asked a question about skimming a mat. If you're going to skim the mat, I'll show you shortly, but grout flow is the best way to skim it because it gets it really tight. So when I get done banding, we'll talk about that. So you can 
you wouldn't suggest putting the new curb with the fleece on it if you're going to put Dietra D over because you're going to put a mat over top of the Dietra D? Do we wait, run that by me again? That shower base that you got in there that's got the uh, curry mm -hmm. on it, mm -hmm. you wouldn't suggest using that if you're going to put dirty feet Oh, yeah, no, I'm just no. That's, a, that's a good question. What would you yeah. recommend on that issue? Oh, putting Dietra D in that if they want it in the inside of the shower. Talk about it. Beach town. And that, so yeah, it's uh, it pays out on our polystyrene trays. It's on in there, but not on the new trays. So you just go ahead and yeah. get the old one. Get the old one for right now. Yeah. If you put the Dietra heat membrane on here because you're gonna heat the shower, even though this is already curdy, you're gonna have to curdy it again. <clears throat> so it has to be encapsulated in a waterproof membrane. So Dietra heat can be installed in the shower with the curb, without a curb, um, but only in our sealed system. It can't go into a traditional system. And again, it's on page 10 in there. So you Shop can still go ahead and use that pan and still go ahead and heat truck and then put a membrane of curdy over the top of the Yeah, that, right. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, Dietra heat. Not Dietra heat. Dietra heat. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Are those new green, are those new pans going to be the only option moving forward? Are all the pans going to have the that, material on top of the mess? Real fair, that's a good question right now. I'm not for sure. That's What's the real that? question. Are, are, are they going to be all And you're saying the density of that pan is better than the previous one. Yes. That was one drawback to the other previous pans. You had to be dense. careful because they yeah. were they were not dense. Yeah. Yeah. If you eat so much as put a gallon of paint on it and you set it down the wrong way, you would dip it. So the old trays were 47 psi in a raw state, but once you tile them with a two by two tile, it increased to 300 psi and it's virtually incompressible. Right. I've actually got a picture right now of my truck. So in, in, in between that in between time when you're right. doing some other things, right. if you so much as drop so it's gonna right. a six yeah. inch knife, even, drop all, all even all with right. these ones, yeah. we're still gonna recommend use a piece of cardboard and kneel on and work off of it. Um, I'm using these new, uh, pronies, which have a flat platform to them, I saw that. so they're pretty stable and solid on the floor. Because my knee pads would dent it constantly. Yep. You know what I mean? I'd yep. have to stay off. I'd have to put cardboard, or I even got to where I was putting three, three inch piece of yep. plywood down. Even with these knee pads, if I was in Mrs. Smith's home and this was actually a job site, um, not a demo like I'm doing today, I would still put a piece of masonite or something cardboard or something down just to work off of. So again, it's protecting the trade. But eventually, over time, we'll all have the curve. They'll all be like this. That's what I figured. Yeah. They're going to be phased yeah. out in the old style. Exactly. And they're all going to have the curve on going. it already. So the whole thing of, is, is about time. Try to you know, show you how you can get the job done faster with better warranties and be guaranteed waterproof and vapor tight without any kind of questions. It makes it real simple. Again, if you watch the video, they'll put that band on before, after. I mean, it, it always blew my mind that they put that the band on at different intervals yep. as opposed to like a shingling deal, a step lashing deal. Right. To me, it would always be the last guy you would think, that up. It doesn't right. work. Like just different ways to do it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do that just because, like you say, the, the, the molecules are interlocking and tying mm -hmm. up everything. But yeah, like, the way I'll always do it my mind. is, I mean, this is great because you can see that you made all your connections. Right. right. But to me, that, that one connection looking down on that, I struggle with that right there running down that wall and get behind that. Right. But that what sheet was on last, then the water runs down and it goes over top, like a step flash. Mm -hmm. You well, know, I struggled right. with that for a long time. Yep. Yep. I know, <laughs> but I struggled with I mean, I struggled with it because, you know, I'm, I'm, with it. I'm an old person too, you know what I mean? Technically, you could ban that first, right? Yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I've seen them do it in the videos online. Well, the band's got to be connected curdy to curdy at some point, other or either way. So it can't go under the tray, it's got to be on top of it. So if this was the old tray, I can band all this, put it on top. I can do the curdy tray, then put this on top. It doesn't matter either way. So personal preference on that. Um, so now he's doing to make the... Right here. Oh, there's one more behind you, one, right? Yeah. Okay, this is a good one. That's, up. That's the short one there. You got so what we have to do... Two. We're making this 100% waterproof and vapor tight from the tray to the Dietra heat mat. So we actually had to take that seam. So that's what Art's doing right here. You know, another nice thing too, you know, guys, I mean, you're not going to affect it by writing all over this. So I mean, you can cut it by well, all your sizes. That. That's a yes or no answer. <laughs> if you have natural stone, don't use a marker. Because the natural stone will bleed the marker. If you got porcelain ceramic and you use a Sharpie, you're fine. But the natural stone, it'll actually bleed through, so the marker will. And make sure you guys are using white thin set on stone, too, versus right. gray, because you'll change the color of the stone, too. Is there a preference on the curtain board? 
first before the tray, put the tray on, and then the dirty board over. I, the I put the dirty board up first. Okay. Get the dirty board first up. Always. Absolutely, because that would keep that, that, that tray tight up front, and then when you make your band. Keep in mind, too, that the with the curdy board or drywall and curdy, you don't have to worry about blocking behind the wall. It's where the pan line is blocking between the studs. So if you put the, the pan in first and on top, you'll have a flexion between the uh, joist base. So always put the wall up first and then the uh, pan, or the, uh, yeah, the pan. So. so that thin set's not waterproof. How is that a waterproof thing? It's the fleece connection, and here you got the dovetails locking the mortar into it. It can't penetrate back through it. We've actually flood tested this thing time and time and time again. We've got restaurants on second floors. Um, one in particular, the guy actually bid out was like a 4,000 square foot area. He got the waterproofing that no one else wanted to do, but he didn't get the tile work. It's too expensive on tile work. So he put DJ across the whole thing, banded everything, floor wall connections. They flooded the thing, let it set for I think it's six or seven days. Um, pull the plug and let it go, no leaks anywhere whatsoever. So. It's totally 100% waterproof and vapor tight. I understand how the fleece attaches to the curdy on the pan, but I don't understand. So if you look at these yeah. little columns, yeah. these are reverse stair step dovetails going down inside. So the mortar is locking into those, and the fleece on the curdy itself is locking to the top of the structure. So the water can't go through it at all. So we, like I said, we can fill this thing full of water and let it set. You'll never get a leak in it. So we have all the testing. It does meet ANSI 11810 for the waterproofing. So. <laughs> all right. So now for the footprint of the shower, we're waterproof. We're vapor tight completely. So anytime you barrier free, it's always a good idea to go beyond the footprint of the shower to make sure everything's tied in with waterproofing. If you don't, and you leave the seam set or you don't run the banding down past it, but the potential for water getting outside the shower, you know it's going to go beyond it. Well, if it's between the tile and the baseboard and the wall, eventually something's going to rot out. So it will leak down below. So you want to make sure you go down the whole footprint of the bathroom. If they're putting wood trim in there, just tell the carpenters, hey, you know, we'll put the trim in, kind of keep the nails up a little bit. If you're putting shoe on, there's not much more you can do. Explain to them as you get closer to the shower, maybe use silicone behind the shoe as opposed to nails so you don't penetrate the waterproofing. So. So this seam would also get banded, um, but before I do that, I'm going to do some coverage with some tile and just show it. I think you guys can get that deal over here with all the banding, so I'll probably just leave this one off to be honest with you. So I'm going to do some coverage on tile, talking about different trowel sizes. So 12 by 12s, 12 by 24s, uh, 16 by 16s. Um, see what, trowel, what size trowels you guys are using and talk about back and all that stuff. So I'll do it now. There's uh, 16s back there, David. What kind of knee pads did you say those were? Pronies. Pronies? Mm-hmm. They're like the, the greatest knee pads ever. You pay for them, but what they're worth it. How much? About two thirty a pair. So this is my third pair in about 15 years. So. Wow. So who all in here? Who all in here back footer style? Back footer is key. So testing is actually proven you can improve your bond strength by up to 50% getting better coverage with it. So with that being said, a lot of guys will trawl out and back butter. I've got a lot of guys that will do circular motions with their trawls. Um, per TCA standards should be combing it one way, back buttering, embedding it, and pushing the opposite way. So we'll do a couple different things in here. I got a 15 by 15. <laughs> like that? <laughs> like cat like reflexes there. <laughs> There it is, tries again. So, typically, most guys are going to use a quarter by three eighths for a 12 by 12. Um, for 13 by 13s, it's kind of pushing the limit, but we'll try one anyway. See a quarter three eighths over there, David? That's uh, oh. 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 there, it's back here, sorry. I was going to say it's not. So, we talked earlier, and I'm coming back to it, so I'm kind of doing a multitasking here. You can take the grout plug, you can just skim the floor, and get it nice and tight if you're going to come back the next day and, and strike, uh, strike the lines and lay the tile. If you don't have control of the job site, I would recommend doing it. Because if you leave for a week or two and other trades in there are contaminating the floor, trapping mud and dirt, that's your bond code. It's not going to be good and you're not going to be able to clean it. If you have access to it, the only person in there, then yeah, please go ahead and do it. It's no problem at all. I used to do this all the time on my jobs. 
Um, other jobs I've done, like my house, I say 700 feet, I work on two lines. And it's down the middle, down the middle, even though I had all kinds of different areas jogging off of it, I was able to run it the entire 700 feet perfectly square off the two lines in the assembly. So, save me a lot of time to do it that way. So, a lot of guys I'll see if there's a low spot in the floor, they'll do this and float over it. So eventually, when you're setting the tile, you're going to have more areas because of the free space. Cracking up, you'll be cleaning a lot more areas off the floor as you go along, which will take more time. If you're going to do it, take a grout float. Grout float cleans it nice and tight. That's the best way to skim the floor if you're going to do Dietro, Dietro XL, or Dietro Heat. You can see the difference there, what it left behind. So when you put your bond coat over to set the tile, it's going to be fully embedded and covered. You'll have no issues whatsoever. All right? There you go. Alright, so let's set this real quick. And again, one of the things too, I see a lot of guys doing this, they're trowels, and they're knocking the ridges down where it's not getting the proper size. So I'm trying to keep that trowel up so that you can get the proper trowel sizes. So let's take one here, it's not that cluttered, let's embed it. decent for not being back butter, but this is a lot of square square inches here that has no coverage, it's not embedded correctly. So let's take one same exact trowel, same exact tile, and we'll back butter. So you see the difference in that. What do you got, quarter by three-eighths right now? Quarter three-eighths, not 13 by 13. And that's a deep lug too, so... Easier tile on the slide. Now the difference in coverage when you hold the two up. So back butter makes a tremendous difference in the coverage of tile. So I would say it's honestly probably close to 100 percent That over here is probably about 65, 70. Do you guys agree? Mm -hmm. Alright, so let's move on to a bigger tile. So <coughs> Uh, yeah, it's for 12x24. What would you guys use for 12x24? Um, quarter three eighths, half by half, three quarter. Quarter three eighths. How many of those we got? Three. Okay. One of the big things, guys, the net on the back right here, this is that powder residue that killed me on the back. So it should be wiped out of the towel. That's a bond breaker. So if I would actually take this right out and rub it across the black, it'd be wet. Right. Show us, David. No, it's all right. Here, here. Yeah, yeah. I don't believe you. <laughs> so, I got a grease around, so let's see what we get. It's actually not bad. That's not bad. Pretty decent. So, some of you guys said you back butter, some said you don't. So, let's see what it looks like come back butter. 12 by 24. Again. Not bad, but we got some spots in there. There's no coverage at all. So a lot of that tile is not covered. So let's do it again. I need that bucket over here. My hands are getting a little dirty. Thank you. Want another piece? Hmm? I will in a second. I clean up so I can grab something here. When you go, when you go to lay the, the wall tile, going up that inside corner, 
you have to use that little that strip that goes in there with the flange on both sides? Or no, you, you don't have to. It's just, just another option. It just, just it's just a soft. Option. Yeah, it's just another option to use. So you see the coverage is night and day difference. And this is actually mirrored right here in the floor as well. So back button really does make a huge difference. Me sitting in a style, I probably use a quarter by half or half by half on an actual job site. So the next style says 16s. Those are one. More 16s. You said you would use quarter by half or half? I would use a quarter by half. So it's a, the reason being is it's narrower and deeper. So the narrower and deeper, taller log, when I collapse it, gives me more contact. The half by half spreads it apart, apart a little bit further, and it makes it harder to get the contact to it. If you get thin set on you, clean it off while it's wet, or it's not coming off, just for the records. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this stuff sticks like no tomorrow. Yeah. Join the same way. <laughs> I've got guys tell me that most insects they can get off the pants, they said the all set just does not come off the pants at all. So let's go into a half by half on this one. You double those? Right off. And two, keep in mind too, I'm also working with a looser mix of thin set. You wouldn't take the set tile and think that it's loose. Typically, when you're doing the curvy, though, you do want it loose, so correct. Oh yeah, make it up for the yeah. install. Do you use it there at all? Yep, all set. That's what we're using. Uh, a good three, four hours out of the bucket. You don't want to go nothing more than four hours a bucket. <laughs> it just seems like yeah. flaky on me, like a chalky on me. Wouldn't that affect that the mortar's wet too? It is. It helps out tremendously. What I always did on job sites, mm -hmm. I always put different trowels with the tile to see what gave me the best cover. Need one more of these, David? One more. I'll get a little bit more powder on the back of it. I've seen tiles that are fully back buttered over backer board, over concrete, over plywood, over uncoupling membranes, clean as a whistle, no transfer. Even though they're back buttered, fully embedded, you can see the exact outline of the tile on the floor, <laughs> clean as a whistle, I came out of the box. I just did 700 feet in my house of 18 by 18s and 12 by 12s. Had to wipe down every single tile, they were full of powder. So, we were just in the house, I had planks the same way when you walked on just pop your mail up and flip it over. Like, so nothing. coverage is definitely better. And you can also see from a side view, turn that sideways, David, without stepping in that pod. Which one? This one. You can also see the thickness of the transfer of coverage as well. Okay. So back buttering makes a tremendous difference on it. My go-to, if I was setting this tile on this job, my go-to would be a three-quarter inch unit straw. So it might seem like a lot, but the coverage and embedment you get is night and day. It's just phenomenal, even without back buttering. You'll see a huge transfer in this. I'll do it right now, as a matter of fact. Now, are you just asking, you suggest that for the floor, not for the walls? Or just for setting the tile. So, it depends on the size of the tile. No, but I mean, like, let's say you use a, a one by, or let's say that 16 by 16, you were just saying you use half by half on the floor. Would you suggest you use that also on the I would floor? probably use half, a quarter by half on the wall, yeah. but on the floor, I'm going to a three quarter U notch. So, we'll eat some fence set up. 
What's that? I said I've never, never seen a tile for you know. That's huge. Have you seen the size of some of these tiles today? Eighteen point sixes. One that's never one foot by two foot. I was just at a job site the other day. We we're looking at. We're doing five by ten panels. <laughs> it's huge. Job site uh, with an architect up in Toledo. You got about 6,000 feet going down, 18 by 36 porcelains. These are monsters. Two little Mac 5 footers to see how good the U notch will get it. So you see you can really achieve a better coverage with a bigger size trawl. So is this adequate for every job? No. But for larger tiles, it means increase your trawl notch. So $200, $250 investment in trawls in a bucket is a great investment. Try out different trawls at the job site to see what's going to work best for the tile you're working with. Keep in mind tiles are maybe the convex or concave, they're cut one way or the other. Most of the time they're cut in the middle up, uh, upward so the corners point downward and make contact to the floor. So. Um, I don't know how many handmade tiles you guys got into or do, but I had one that's made by Sonoma. It's a 12 by 24 handmade tile, and those things were just like bow and arrows. Half by half notch trowels to see where we go. I made contact about two inches in, all around the perimeter, not an ounce of thin set in the middle of it. So I had to really get a uh, large and heavy tile thin set. It was actually on a wall, believe it or not, too. So I had to actually back the entire back of that with a trowel and make contact to every single tile, pull them off, and check them for coverage. To make sure they're going to stay up there. So I can use the outprint, the outline of the perimeter as my guide. They go to the middle, comb it back out, comb it back to the tile in those areas, put it to the wall, and check my coverage. So again, every tile is going to be different that you install. So it's always a good idea to check coverage first. Um, even during the installation, as you guys are going along, check coverage again. So I'll make sure nothing's happening to the floor. Per industry standards, you should have a quarter inch per ten every ten feet. You should have no more than a quarter inch of deviation. That's for a porcelain ceramic tile. Natural stone is an eighth of an inch and ten linear foot. If you get in a large format, which is considered anything with one edge 15 inches or longer, then it's eighth of an inch per ten, uh, per ten feet. So nothing more than that. So that doesn't mean let's level on top of the floor and flatten it out. It means you should really flatten the substrate before putting down, whether it be on coupling or a backer board or if you're doing plywood, whatever it may be, you want to flatten the floor first before you start putting tile in place. So, all right. I think that's pretty much all we have for you guys today. So hopefully you guys found this educational. Hope you guys learned a lot from it. Um, our cards are over there. So make sure you grab our cards. If you guys have questions, give us a call. If you guys call us and we don't answer, as soon as we free up, we'll call you right back. It's like right now during this whole demonstration, my phone's buzzed about eight times. So as soon as we get to the truck, all the way home for the next hour and a half, we'll be nothing but phone calls. <laughs> so, but uh, literature's here, guys, to take with you. Um, like I said, if you guys have somebody at the office might need some literature, grab another set, take it with you. If you guys need an extra half, please feel free to grab one and take it with you as well. And then. Uh, when you go over that way to see David and uh, those shirts over there, guys, with some shirts. All right. Thanks, Thanks for coming out, guys. We appreciate yeah, it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank